All right, let's do a cheers to the Shelby to Shipper Liquid Beer for the Podcast. The again. <laughs> I love you guys. Careful. That takes hot. This morning. Hallowed indeed. What's going on, everybody? It is the Nielsen Show. Uh, Zactica, when you get a chance, let's fire up this bad boy, too. Oh, we'll get, uh, so we'll get that set up. Yeah. It, it really I, I looked a... at the screen. I was like, why is it so uh, Why is it so dark there right now? Uh, yeah. We'll get that uh, locked and loaded as well. We'll be coming at you from the Popeye's Louisiana Kitchen studio this morning. And uh, if you've not yet uh, checked out the Popeye's wings, you got to get your hands on them. They are delicious. They got that new location. Drove by on the way in today. Drove by a big sign that was like, brand new Popeye's location right here. Like it's right right there on the left. It hits you. You see the sign. You're like, turn in immediately. <laughs> and it's uh, it's real good at Popeye's Louisiana Kitchen. JCD's in there says, where's that Popeye's logo? Like it just messes with everybody. Well, right? you yeah. don't, it, it, like some during the day, but once it's gone, that's it. And you're like, you never knew what you had until it's gone, right? And that type of thing. And that's that way, it's way different, right? Way different. Depressing feel to it all. But uh, how about those blue jackets, eh? Uh, oh, man. I thought hey. you were going to say, how about those blue jays? I was like, oh, no. What do you mean? I'm done with them. We're talking. We're talking no hitters here. How do you get no hit? No, I mean it's five like, days into the season. What the hell? Losing in overtime down in St. Louis on a Monday night is one oh, thing. Could but, be so much. But worse. getting no hit down in Houston yeah. or losing to the Blue Jackets or yeah. like there were a lot of things that happened last night where I think you can take last night in St. Louis and be like, ah, it's not that bad. You had a point. You move uh, on. Yeah, that was the one thing I was looking at. I mean, I, I, they were actually down. But like they had to. They had. They earned go. the point. They <laughs> came back and got go. a point. Mr. Glass half full, which over I here. thought was uh, which I thought was huge. Sure. So you've got that. It could be worse. You could have lost to the Columbus Blue Jackets yesterday. You could have gotten no hit by the Houston Astros. It could have been worse in so many ways. Yeah. You could be the Raptors right now struggling with a 13-game yeah. losing streak. You could be the Raptors and hey. probably lose to Iowa's women's basketball team for sure. Caitlin Clark is a – we'll get to well, it more during hey. the morning announcements. Yeah. But she is a cold-blooded killer. We'll get into that as we work our way through the show. I said it was well. a week of big boy hockey, and these Blues have played the Oilers – Big boys this season. They've, they've been a bit of a thorn in their side. So you, you say farewell to you. In, enjoy your summer. And uh, flush it and head off to Dallas. Do you remember? Do you remember? You what, said it uh, go to overtime. I did say it would you, go to overtime. I did say it. I did you, say, you, I did you say, say that. It would, uh, you, it would it go to you. overtime, yeah. Are we a little blurry on the YouTube screen? I, I just see that. No. Let's uh, put your hand in front of it, Zach, to come and then... Uh, Breathe on it heavy and give it a wipe. It, uh, and it's, and it's not the wipe. We'll get the we'll get that focus sorted out at some point. If not, it'll be known as the blurry show for the rest of our days. Sh- should autofocus it sometime. Yeah. One more time. One more 
It's actually comes trying to he's trying the old hand trick a few times. Look at that hand. Jen says it does look, look a mitt. bit blurry. I thought it was me. Did that fix it, Zay? All right, well, we'll, uh, we'll get a peek. We'll see if it uh, gets fixed up a little bit uh, better. Uh, Millwood's Matt says, your camera on the YouTube feed is blurry as hell. Yeah, it's, it's not you, it's though. That's the good uh, thing. Like it looks pretty good on there. Here we go. We're back. We're oh, back. Oh, oh, look at that crystal clear. We are back. Man, the old hand trick really, really works. It really uh, does the trick, for lack of a better ah, yeah. term. Uh, trick of the hand. Uh, all right, 780-218-9999. A happy halo to all of you on this uh Tombstone Tuesday. And look, I knew these text messages were going to come rolling in. We're going to spend a lot of the show on it. Although I don't necessarily know we need to spend a lot of the show on it, but I know people will want to spend a lot of the show on video reviews for goaltender interference. Well, let's so get going. we'll get to that as we work our way through the program today. We dedicate the opening hour to it. Hey, If you have any thoughts on it, which you probably do, text us in the Paris Jewelers inbox at 780-218-9999. 780-218-9999. 9999 is where you can get us Paris Jewelers, 22 locations across the country. Go see our friends at PJs and they'll look after you. You can hop online at parisjewelers.com if you'd like to uh, take part and join in on the Paris Jewelers inbox today. It could be how you end up winning your text of the day by getting into the old PJs inbox. It's the ring box. It's the bling box. It's the Paris Jewelers inbox. And they got lots of fancy uh, shiny things. Look at this. Look at that. Not just for the ladies. They got jewelry for men, too. The ring box. The bling box. It's the Paris Jewelers inbox. <laughs> That's what it is. It's the Paris Jewelers inbox. It's the funnest place in the city. I'll just say it. The Paris Jewelers inbox is one of the most amusing places in the entire city. Jump on in. It really is. You've got your white abs and your jaspers. I say Paris Jewelers inbox is the place to be. You can win a gift certificate to uh, A&W for the uh, text of the day today. And what's better than one A&W Mama Burger made with a perfectly seasoned grass-fed beef patty? Plus the pickles and the onion and the ketchup and the mustard and the teen sauce. Two of them. Two Juicy Mamas for only $9.99 until April 14th. See that through the focus? Two. two. Eric, are you holding up one or two? It's two. Nobody knows. It's a two. And it's uh, it's outstanding. 780-218-9999. Come in, surprise us on a Tombstone Tuesday, and win text of the day. Well, do yourself a favor tonight. Maybe, uh, you know... Hot day, eat out. Who wants to cook? Who wants to cook on a day when it yeah, gets what are up we, to what are we looking at 18 today? degrees, right? 18 you, don't degrees be, today. you don't want to be fooling around and making food. Get in W to do it for you. You know what's crazy is I'm only looking at like three to four more degrees. And then we're out of my wheelhouse, right? I'm, I'm like 20 yeah. to 23 degrees. That's where yeah. I want to live. Well, and there's always, there's never like one specific forecast. I'm looking at a 20 right now. Yeah. Look at maybe some showers tomorrow. It's all over the place. But... Showers. Are those early flurries in the morning? Who knows? I hope not. I just yeah. want the show. But today, this is the hot day. So if you're going to, you know, treat yourself, eat out, rinse that last night overtime loss from your system. That's good. Uh, I love this. Wheels is in. It says, still blurry. <laughs> A teeth. No, it's not after that Don't worry. Don't worry. Uh, that's just a teeth being a teeth. That's uh that's pretty funny, buddy. That's pretty funny. Real good one. Uh seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine. And we will get to uh we'll get to roll with those uh all the way through the show this morning. Uh this is in it says, guys, I highly recommend adding the seasoned salt to the fries and or onion rings at the dub. You talking about that one that's on the chain? Where you go get your napkins ah, yeah, and because you don't want anybody to steal it. I, I get what you're talking about there. It's got is that, that, that still a thing? Orange reddish tint to it. Yeah, mm. I don't know that stuff. That that's good stuff. Mm. I mean, it's not really a hot take, but yeah. seasoning salt yeah. makes everything better. I'm seasoning, sorry, it just yeah. Does. <laughs> it just does. <laughs> seasoning salt makes everything better. Uh, roll up the sleeves. <laughs> I am on fire wow. today. I'm on fire today. The Oilers to the NHL review committee. How lewd. Yeah. Uh, well. <laughs> sorry, that's uh, that's not going to be goaltender interference, or that is going to be goaltender interference. That is a hell of a thing for you to say to me. Yesterday, we had a visit from Marshall and the Muzz. So, Muzz is out there playing basketball. I turn around. Marshall's sitting here like this. He's sitting at the, we're sitting right here in my spot. He's got the mic here. And he's like, uh, text of the day for A&W. And then he went over here and he was pushing. He goes, that is a hell of a thing for you to and say to me. he looks at Tammy and he goes, 
Well, somebody should text in. That is a hell of a thing for you to say to me. And he starts laughing because he said hell. I was just like, oh, my God, he's hilarious. Hook him up to something. I want to oh, watch yeah. him do a radio show. He's in a ready room to alone. go. Like, I don't really care like, he's ready to go. what the topics are, what the uh, the angle is. He gets it. I was, we were sitting it. around dinner the other night, weird things we do. But I was, um, I was quizzing them. Because when he's home for spring break, he sits there and watches the show for like two hours after he gets up. He just watches. He doesn't do anything Love else. It. The mother's rush. She told me at dinner. She goes, Daddy, I don't really listen or watch the show. I was like, that's okay, Lizzie. That's great. Thanks. A confession. A Monday evening confession. But Marshall will sit there and I'll be like, kind of easy trivia. He's like, Mr. Mike's. <laughs> Greg Wyshynski, Metal Supermarkets. Like, he just knows he like, does the all lick. the sponsor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's getting it. He's figuring it out. Uh, the real- well, it's good to know that uh, during your CFL uh, summer that uh, we have somebody yeah, in your stead. Yeah, it is going to be funny when people <laughs> tune in on a Friday when I'm taking off to Winnipeg, and it's just a smaller version of me <laughs> sitting here with you. I told the kids last night they should go as us for Halloween. God, I want Because him to- Elizabeth could pull off... Your hair, yeah, yeah right? it would work out really well. I think that'd be really I good. Marshall doing that bling box, ring box. Uh, pa- I mean, that's the Paris jewelers in box. I'm done after that. A lot of fun. <laughs> that's the end, guys. The Oilers' last game last night was mid with some sus refing and losing to the Blues. Game was so cringe. The team needs to find their riz if they want to be bussin' bussin'. Says, did I do that right, Zach? To come and uh, yeah, I think that would probably fit the bill. I mean, that would be the uh, next generation's. Level of approval on that game last night. Yeah, for, yeah, for so. real. I think so. Yeah. That's, a, that's a good one. Uh, all right, let's lay out the show for you today. We'll get to your morning announcements coming up. We do have the uh, morning after show for the award-winning EM Utility Locating. In which we'll get into each and every video review call. Oh, one by one. In length. Yeah. Well, I don't know if people are going to like my takes on the video review today. I'm kind of scared to share them because I don't want a bloodbath in the nasty chat or on the text uh, line. But. Look, yeah, uh, the game's over. We're done. We, we can talk about it now. This is a safe place. We, they got a point. We're doing confessions. This should be a place where we just, again, cooler heads, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe I save, got a point. Exactly. Maybe I save my take on the th- four confessions. Maybe. Here's my confession. Because then it's a, yeah. Here's my confession It'd make a little easier on you. Uh, Craig Button's going to pop by just after 7 o'clock this morning. Cool bed hotline of the day. 7.30 today. We'll get to your confessions. Vegas keyword 7.45. You don't want to miss that. And I says pardon coming up at 7.45 today. Vegas keyword first of four opportunities here today on Edmonton Sports Talk to get your hands on that. Kind of easy trivia just after 8 o'clock. Three questions too many today just after uh, that. Probably around like 8, 10-ish. Walking Gage will pop by. It's race week in Japan. We'll go there. And, of course, we'll get Gage's thoughts on the uh, goaltender, uh, goaltender interference reviews and the Oilers dropping one to the Blues. Uh, I, I know it sounds weird to say it in this market because everybody just loves their hockey so much, but not the end of the world. I mean, an overtime loss to the St. Louis Blues, not the end of of the world. What did we say going in? This is arguably the Blues' most important game of the season as they're still in hot pursuit of a wild card spot. Yeah. Whether or not you think they're actually going to get one, but they have to believe in that room. They have a good goaltender. They have a stout team that's given the Oilers a lot of problems this year. So, yeah, just one of those nights. They're 7 2 and one of their last 10. The Avalanche also taken one on the chin last night. So, there will be nights. There are nights like these. You move on. Dallas tomorrow. Who was it that said, Mama said there'd be days like this? Guns and Roses. Mama said, was that, was that yeah. Guns and Roses? Oilers uh, five points back at the Canucks with one game in hand for top spot in the Pacific. Not as juicy as it would have been with that hey. extra point. Boy, I mean, it's not the end of the world. Not the end of the world. Let's no. get in your morning announcements. All right, we'll get into it as we work our way through. JCD says, don't lose any sleep on that game. I think the calls were legit. I don't think we should have challenged the shingle. Well, we'll get into this. Okay, we, uh, you're a brave boy we'll here. We'll get into this. I do wonder, though, like, it, it is better if the Blues would have spanked him 7-2 because then people would be mad. The, yeah. the, the mornings after where it's like, yeah, it's okay, but it's not, and people don't really know what to do. At least there's there's this uh, definite emotion where people can can funnel themselves, anger or happiness, one of the two. But in this market, it's tough to kind of have it in the mid. I, I will say, yesterday, one of my but my buddy Eddie the Gambler, yes, huge Oilers fan, put, texted put me last night. He was well, <laughs> probably he's got a bet on this discussion happening at this time. 
Um, he did text me after the overtime goal and was like, what the hell was that comb doing there? Like, he was a little fired up about that. I had just said, I was watching the game with a buddy last night, and I had just said, the next time McDavid and Drysdale get on the ice, this game is over. Because they had some momentum without those guys on the ice. And yeah. I said, as soon as you throw McDavid and Drysdale back out there, and they were on the verge of coming back out there, um, but Sod hops on the ice, gets in on a breakaway, and absolutely finishes it. And you know what? St. Louis, St. Louis played well last night, too. Yeah. I, thought, I thought both teams, I thought the Oilers played a really good hockey game. I thought St. Louis, it was, go, it was overall, it was a pretty well-played hockey game between the two teams. Uh, and in the end, they both get a point, so everybody's happy. Yeah, Ekholm gets his goal and an assist the on the rocket. evening. I mean, it's a hell of a shot there. I think Browner with the uh, with the assist, so. I thought Connor Brown was going to score in that one shorthanded rush. He's been so red hot lately. I was like, watch him. There it is. It didn't happen, but whatever. Uh, your morning after show coming up. We're in your morning announcements right now for 100.3 The Bear. Edmonton's best rock. Yukon and McCord every single morning. I hop on with those guys around 645. It's pre-taped. Just so you know, it's uh, it's uh, that's behind the curtains in FM radio. right? Here. Pre-taped bits, and then they'll pretend it's live, but it's not. But that's, you got to be honest with people, right? Well, I think we can hear in this. Uh, yeah, in this. I will form, say right? today's hit was terrific. Sure, I brought up Caitlin Clark because how can you not? And then they were like, I don't know if that's going to go over well with our listeners because you know the listeners on the bear are different than the hardcores uh, here on yeah. Edmonton Sports Talk. But uh, Caitlin Clark, watching her play last night, man, considering what was on the line, looking for her revenge against LSU and Angel Reese was great too. 17, 17 points, twenty boards. But Caitlin Clark is a freak. Caitlin Clark is doing as advertised. My and God. Again, tiger by the tail and getting that revenge over LSU. But uh, UConn as well, the number three, upsetting number one USC. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the, the Elite Eight finishes off. Final four, NC State, uh, South Carolina, and UConn, Iowa. So how about those wolf packs, eh? NC State must be just living the time of this their is, life. This is cloud. Not, that campus must oh, just be it must the place be to just be. Just a huge party yeah. right now <laughs> on the NC State campus. Man. Congratulations to both of those programs. The game that I watched last night, I watched the majority of LSU Iowa. Like, I made a, a note in my phone. It was like 5.15, this basketball game starts. Turned it on at the beginning. Watched pretty much the entire thing. Uh, it was one of the best March Madness games. Actually, it was probably the best March Madness game that I've watched so far. Like, Caitlin Clark, this this year. I mean, there's been other better games, both men's and women's in the past. But Caitlin Clark, with the, with the hype around her and the greatness that you see with her, to step up. In that spot, that's what that's what all time greats do. That's right. That's just what you all time the, greats yeah, do. The, yeah. They get put on this stage, and then they don't only they don't only deliver, but they surpass expectations. She's hitting logo three. She's going off for forty one. She's going behind the back. She's going behind the back passes. Like she just looked like she was computing the game at a different level last night, and her range is absolutely ridiculous. So it was a pleasure to watch last night, man. That was an excellent battle. Between those two teams. I didn't watch much of the second game, obviously, because the other game was on, but I pretty much watched the entire LSU-Iowa game, and that was that was fun last night. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot better than if you were watching the Blue Jays game. I got a text from Jake at Cool Bet. We were going back and forth, a little lock shop chat, going back and forth and things. And the dead. Jake was like, well, Blue Jays about to get no hit. And I was like, what? What do you mean? I'm like, I know they're not winning, but they're getting no hit right now? And he's like, yeah, four outs away. So then I kind of kept tabs on that, and I just... I mean, how much do you think early in a season like this to get no hit? Wow. What does that do for your overall team bats on a confidence level? Until they had 10 on you as well. I mean, you're coming off an opening weekend series where you split with the Rays. You're like, okay, well, things, life is life is fine. And the Yankees, you know, I know I want walking around here worrying about them, but they just go and sweep aside the Astros. So you're like, I what the hell is going on there? Astros winless. So now the first win is a 10 nothing no hitter of the Jays who are 500 over the course of the weekend and the pirates are five and oh so you you make sense of the early goings of the major league baseball season because i can't brewers three and oh love it tigers four and oh seven eight zero two and eight ninety nine ninety nine if you're listening on tune in or you're listening on iheart or you're listening at edmonton sports talk.com that is where you can chime in and uh, lots of text messages that we will try to uh sort through here this morning guys you should have taken my advice and changed the 
Connor Brown song to Kane, he would have been off the schneid last night. It would have counted. Opportunity missed. Is well, that on us? We can only get... That might be on us. I'll take get one guy off the schneid at a time here. Yeah. It's, it's heavy lifting here. <laughs> that review, that's not even worth talking about. They got that call right. I mean, it went off his stick. Boom. And, and, and yes. that, that one was fine. But did it even hate it? Did it hit his skate or did it hit just hit the ice on like a revolution and spin in? I, 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 like I kind of think I, that it hit I the ice it, and spun it in. It depends on the angle that you yeah, look yeah, at. Yeah, it's yeah, kind yeah. of weird. It one. looked like magic trick. At one point, I said, to my, I said, that's off his chest. Like, he doesn't get the like, goal. That doesn't make any I'd sense. I'd like to give him something, though, for the uh, Some for sort the effort. of effort. I mean, yeah. Well, I had a little fight last night. Like, Evander Kane's trying to get himself going. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And, you know. Yeah, it's not like the body language you're seeing is, is something of utter disgust. Yeah. Which we have kind of seen sometimes with him in the past. So, I think it was encouraging. So, that's a positive. Uh, let's see here. Where's uh, Tube Socks? Yeah. I still have never watched a complete basketball game in my life. Nice. College professional or otherwise. Well, we'll pass that over to the confession segment and see yeah. what they can do with it. Hey, JCD780 says, that was the only basketball game I've watched in a long time, and it was great. Now I'm going to be watching the rest of the Iowa games for sure. That's good to hear. There's still going to be two more. There's still be two more kicking around. We'll get into a little bit of a deeper dive with the... Uh, Morning after show coming up for the award winning EM utility locating. How about uh, how about this hat making an appearance last night? Hey, on the old Sportsnet broadcast. Hey, hey, hey. That was uh, stateside. Hey, how St. Louis put it on the map? How hey. many of you were full blown Leonardo DiCaprio meme sitting there on your couch or your chair? Pointing at the TV because I, I was I was out at an establishment and I was doing. It. I was like, yeah. look at that. Look at this! And it's a sports talk hat. And at the time, I stepped back after, pulled out the old cigar. It was just like, oh, this is a, uh, this is great. Uh, it's a sports talk hat on national television or regional television, I guess. Uh, yeah, I guess regional television is not as cool, but still, you hide those things back there. Oh, yeah, I've been hiding these cigars back that's there a, for a, that's good a great puff. little. Uh, okay, yeah, it's still in plastic. I don't want to ruin them or anything. Uh, it does look like uh, it looked like a straight brim to me. That was a straight brim. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So just yeah. getting that over. That the was line a couple. There. They were up here. You met them. Absolutely. We had a good night at Hudson's. So, oh, it uh, was good. It was good. Brandon, but it was nice seeing. Uh, I, so I sat back and I was like, wait a second, this game's in St. Louis. <laughs> I, I, when I first saw it, I thought, oh, even in Edmonton, that's kind of cool. Yeah. But in St. Louis, it's even cooler. So that was uh, that was good. Shout out to them for uh, for repping the uh, the hat last night. I thought that was good. Uh, as far as these video reviews go. The I we'll get to the the one that took away the Nuge goal first. When I first saw the play, I thought, "Oh, they're going to challenge this for sure," and I can see why they challenged it. Obviously, they ended up getting the call to go their way. The only hesitation I have, and I'm not I'm not going to sit here and be like, "The Oilers got hosed today." So if you've come to that place for the homer take, I'm sorry, you're not going to get it. Uh, however, I did think. Briefly, Hyman connects with Bennington's pad, moves him slightly, but Bennington's pads are still together. Yes. And then he was thinking about making a play on the puck. He kind of opened his legs up for it to go. And when I saw that, I said, well, will they look at it and go, yeah, he might have been moved a bit, but it's not like Hyman's contact opened he his didn't legs. Open it up. I would say this, though. When he bumped him, it moved Bennington's leg a bit. When he opened his pads, that was him trying to set himself from the to bump. To reset from the bump? So I Possibly, can see where yeah. that's... I know that Hyman didn't crack open the the, the dam of Bennington's pads, but but in my for my eyes, I, I just saw it as he got bumped, and then to reset himself, that made him open the pads. I thought it was going to be no goal right from the, from the get-go. When I saw the pad reset, I thought, oh, I wonder if, I wonder if they factor that in. But when they announced it as no goal, I was like, yeah. It's just funny I, that then Bennington hangs his head in despair that, you know, he and he alone effed up in this situation. Yeah. The goal is taken back. And then you have the 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 other review on Skinner, and Skinner's got his arms in the air and complaining and all this, and then it's 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 given in nothing. So well, it's we, kind of well, both goalies yeah. kind of having a a bone to pick there and each getting a decision that none of them was really kind of rooting for. So it's kind of weird in itself. Morning after show for EMU Tilly locating just after a 6.30 sports update here for Green Plan. And we will, you can load in the Stuart Skinner postgame, Zach. I think I saw it there. So we'll, we'll get to that coming up here around 6.40. Kind of interested to hear what Skinner had to say. Because I didn't think they should have challenged that at all. I know Skinner was like, he interfered with me. But the Oilers have been so good at looking at it and 
I mean, at full speed, you're like, what, what exactly happened here? And then Skinner was pointing to his pad. I, you know, last I just, night, I thought I heard in the post game that he said that his blocker was kind of interfered with. I know. I didn't think they should have challenged that one at all. I didn't think there was any chance that was getting overturned. Especially when there's that much pointing. I just think, and, and I'm not, like, this is, this is me separating myself from the situation. I just think, you knowing what you know about the NHL and, and officials and everything, and game management, if you will, uh, when a goaltender is that illustrated about it, do they want to give in to that type of, like, I'm just getting into the mind of them and how, how, how the league and Toronto and the refs on the ice think. I just think that when you're, even if it is very obvious and egregious, and if it's obvious, you shouldn't have to oh, be yeah, pointing. Of course, yeah. But I, I just wonder, again, Bennington dropping his head as he did, not complaining at all, and then Skinner pointing all around, and knowing what we know about NHL officials and sometimes how they can get, lose emotion within the game. I'm just saying that could have done him a detriment as opposed to maybe something else. I, I, I was wondering, when I saw Skinner call for it, I thought, are they going to do And then you saw the replay before they announced that they were challenging. I said, well, yeah, yeah. this doesn't seem, Not a this doesn't seem, yeah, yeah, this seems pretty petty, if anything. Uh, so, yeah, I, mean, I guess the hot take today is I thought they got both calls right. I really, I really Losing did. the review war, hey? Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I sometimes those things aren't going to And maybe you just toss it way. to them. Maybe you see that's the game is going. There's already been one. You, you throw it over there, and maybe you get the, the refs into some sort of a game manage, you know, where they second guess the I don't know. It, it, it just kind of seems weird that, again, the, the one goal, and, and people can argue, and people have their thoughts. Nasty chat, uh, text line as well, uh, Pierce Drew's inbox. But I just, again, when one wasn't illustrated and it's given, and the other is illustrated so much. Yeah, and you kind of, like you kind of know how this thing is going to go. So whether it's the coaching staff trying to be like, "Hey, you know, we'll we'll get our reviews in too. We'll show you." Well, it doesn't matter because they're not going to give it to you anyways. I just I don't know. The yeah. NHL is it's a funny old thing. Stoff on the intermission was just a treat to watch because I mean, I think most Oilers fans can kind of get the didn't frustration. have the sound on where we were. Oh, I don't yeah. think so. Yeah, he was he was uh, not for the intermission. Yeah. Felt was bad, he, was he, felt bad was for he, him. Was he losing it? Or well, was he not just, losing oh. it, just kind of like tired. You know, and I think a lot of people in the refrain is let them play, let them play hockey. I know I was going with it in, in the Paris to lose inbox. Like, why don't you just eliminate rules? One guy wants one guy wants video review. The, 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 the point of video review was to get the calls, you know, right. And yeah. I get that. And maybe sometimes we overdo it. Um, but the fact that we want to swing so far the other way now where we just kind of, you know, one official on the ice. And he stays between the blue lines. And that's it. And that's it. Whatever he sees goes. And that's it. Don't bitch and complain <laughs> no about it. No arguing, yeah. Uh, Roger texted and says, Hey, guys, all of these calls still really piss me off about that Anaheim series. <laughs> the league is just so frustrating. Well, that one, you still go back. Now, it's funny how things change because, like, what are we going to tell Corey and now Perry's an oiler? And you're like, ah. Well, we, um, but that's still, he that still should have never India. counted. I, yeah. I'll never understand that for the life of me. Like, move to pet. Anyway, we're not getting into How about that. We're not, here. We're Bad not ice, worse refing. The ice too is a thing of a uh, something to watch. I, last I mean, night. I thought they got the video reviews. I thought they got the video re reviews right. We're going to get into the game here coming up a little bit more. Let's get to a sports update for Green Plan. We we'll hear what Stuart Skinner had to say after the game. More of your reaction to it at seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine. Or hit us up over in the uh, nasty chat as well. If you are watching on YouTube this morning, let's not be shy about those thumbs up. Right? What are you saving them for? There's no reason to save them, so you might as well just hammer them out. You can't take them with you. Right? right? Yeah, well, yeah, when you die, <laughs> you don't get to take your thumbs up with you. So give them to us. <laughs> might as well. Hit us, up, uh, hit us up right there in the uh, the thumbs up. And look at this little fly here on my bay. On my, uh, hey, the first one he landed right on landed uh, <laughs> right on my paper, and I didn't kill him. Guess I'm just in that type of mood today. Let's get to a sports update with LTE. Oilers coming up short in St. Louis. They drop a 3-2 decision to the Blues in overtime. I killed them. <laughs> Did you get with the hat? I changed my mind. I got they, my, my those sport. Edmonton Sports Talk hats, Hive I tell you. product marketing. Bring <laughs> the buzz. That fly sure feeling the buzz. Um, Oilers three-game win streak snap. 3-2 in overtime to the Blues. Edmonton will remain on the road. They'll visit Dallas tomorrow. Elsewhere last night. Leafs 6-4 over Florida. Islanders with a big 4-3 win over the Flyers. Blue Jackets defeating Colorado 4-1 in the Jets over the Kings. 4-3 Winnipeg snapping a six-game slide. Blue Jays take one on the chin down in Houston. They drop game one of a three-game set to the Astros. 10-0. Ronel Blanco tossing the first no-hitter of the season. 
Game two will go later tonight. First pitch, 6-10. Women's March Madness last night. Number three, UConn over number one, USC, 80-73. While Caitlin Clark made nine threes, finishing with 41 points, leading Iowa over LSU, 94-87. Devin Booker at 52 as the Suns got past the Pelicans, 124-111. Raptors, they'll look to snap a 13-game slide when they host the Lakers tonight. It's one of nine games around the NBA. Canada's Brad Gushu with a 7-4 win over New Zealand this morning. The Men's World Curling Championships. Canada sit at 4-1 with a date against the USA later this morning at 11. And second round of the AJHL playoffs continues tonight. Drum Heller hosts Calgary with the Canucks up two games to none. Canmore welcome in Whitecourt. That series tied at one game apiece. Sports update brought to you by Green Plan, providing you with award-winning environmental planning and consulting services, whether it's municipal, industrial, or residential. Plan it right with Green Plan. Visit green-plan.com or give them a call, 780-455-4292. Being a fan of the Oilers today takes everything you got. Taking a break from all your worries sure would help a lot. Wouldn't you like to have your say? It's the morning after show where we will talk about the game. And let you know who you should blame. You want to show where you will know if the problems are still the same. You want to show every morning after the game. You want to show so people know if the problems are still the same. You want to show every morning after the game. Nielsen Show songs, of course, brought to you by our great partners at Sportball. Check them out, sportball.ca. They got all their summer programs up right now. And uh, you can hop online on their website, www.sportball.ca, and uh, you know, find something fun for your kids this upcoming summer. Strummy with a hell of a nasty chat uh, message in there. I don't know if you are uh, regarding your... Uh no, yeah, that's a prior good one. to the yeah, sports yeah. update. Upon further review, you did make contact with the fly. Therefore, the call stands. Good kill. Yeah, I felt like I had to. It's early. You got to send a message early in small fly season yeah. that it will not be tolerated. Your presence here will not be tolerated. Your hand was a little high, though. Was it? On that wax. Uh -oh. So I think we. That's my uh, bad. I think we'll have to call that back. Resurrect the fly. And uh... <laughs> after further review, blank. Fill it in. 780-218-9999. 780-218-9999. Barry to the inbox this morning says, Both goals should have counted. Both They both look similar. The use of a review was not intended to take away these types of goals. Yeah. Review wasn't brought in to take away. But that wasn't the big, you know idea behind it i mean it, it, it's all about increasing offense to which i get when goals are disallowed given the review that it's like oh you're going against the offense but it's to get it right i i i, I thought they got the calls right last night we'll uh we'll leave it if you want to chime in 780-218-9999 780-218-9999 would have been big for nuge though hey that would have been nice. I mean, that that that's. But he hasn't scored an even strength goal in six weeks. Shh. Holy smokes! That's not good. Mm -hmm. uh, Feathers in says, guys, that morning after song just breaks me. I it, can't. Yeah, I just I, can't. I yeah. See, and, and we again, haven't played it very. When often. You're going in after a night that you're pissed off. I know. You're you kind of like, ah, I forget about the song. We gotta get into this. Now it's it, it is sad. <laughs> like it, Brent, Brandon's sad. Damn it. It is so sad. It's tough. Uh, all right, let's get into your morning after show for the award-winning EM Utility Locating. They are the locators of the year in the province of Alberta. So you know you're going to be safe with them. EM Utility Locating. Don't kill yourself. Call 780-222-9497 or visit their website, www.emutilitylocating.com. GPR and concrete scanning, damage prevention, planning, design, education, and training. April is Dig Safe Month. So make sure you're extra careful and give our partners over at EM Utility Locating a call or visit their website as well. 
All right, the EST big moment that happened. What are you going with, Rick? Any nice one game? of the, any one of the reviewed goals. I mean, that's that's kind of what we're talking about this morning. Oh yeah, a hockey game went on as well, into which they lost three two in overtime. Um, but it is kind of the dominating conversation this morning is the goals that that were reviewed that weren't called. That again, you've voiced your opinion. Uh, uh, Barry voiced his, and everybody's voicing theirs this morning. But to me, it's those goals and and the calls, and and again. You might think in in your world that one or two of those stand and and the game is different. They didn't, and it's a 3-2 overtime loss. So my big moment or moments that happen were those goal reviews. It's taken the city by storm this morning. I I think I'm going to go with the tying goal because it would have felt really bad, I think, for that group to not come away with a point. Yeah. You know, you played really well in that hockey game. They did. You're sitting there going, like, how are, how are they down 2-1 right now? And then McDavid makes a pretty damn nice play along the boards, throws it across, and Leon Dreisaitl puts it in the back of the net, and you're like, okay. Well, they're going to come away from this game with a point. Possibly two. Kind of kept that alive. Uh, but for them, at that stage of the game, to, to find that equalizer and uh, at least come away with a point, that goal came with just over five minutes left in the game. Uh, I'll go with Dreisaitl's 39th as your EST. Big moment that happened. Super stat of the night. What jumps off the page for you, buddy? Well, I mean, I don't know. Again, to my big moments and, and the goals that weren't called, I mean, Kane, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, I mean, how that could have shifted things, not only for the team and the night, but for those individuals as well. For those two well. guys, yeah. I mean, that that's kind of the, the thing that gets overlooked. Um, I will go, though, I guess for my super stat in, and this will lead into the fourth star, but a 9-4-7 for one Jordan Binnington, uh, 38 shots against, 36 saves. Um, I, in the season series here, St. Louis 6-3 over Edmonton. Edmonton 3-2 winners in overtime back in February. And now St. Louis 3-2 victors in overtime. It's been a tough team to play this season. And uh, Jordan Bennington has made it tough in all those occasions. So 9-4-7 for him last night in the win. Um, I don't maybe think doing anything too over the top in terms of highlight reel uh uh, you know, saves or anything such as that. But whenever he's in a net, man, it, it, you got to up the game. And and he didn't necessarily have to stand on his head. No, but it's, but it's, he was still very good. You're not beating him with any. Yeah, you know, I mean, the Ekholm shot was a laser beam. It's so yeah. Um, Bennington's nine four seven, and I'll give him the fourth star as well for the evening because I just thought he is he's one of those top guys around the league. Bennington plays the Oilers very well. They flash that one stat up there at one point. And you're like, oh man. Like you put a you put a you put a I don't know run of the mill average what most teams have in the NHL goaltender on this Blues team I don't know where they w- might be I don't know if they're flirting with a wild card spot this morning but yeah he's certainly a uh, he's a top guy super sad of the night for me I'll just I'll just go to Matthias Ekholm goal and an assist four shots on goal played almost twenty five minutes he and Nurse were up over twenty four minutes in the game last night so I'll, I'll look at uh, Matthias Ekholm. And his stat line for the super stat of the night last night. Three stars, Shen, Saad, and Ekholm. And you said Jordan Bennington to be your fourth star yeah. of the high. I mean, he should have been one of the three stars. Nothing, yeah, against, so, nothing against Saad scoring the overtime winner. But the stars last night probably should have been Bennington and then Shen and Ekholm if that's what you wanted to go with. Strummy raises the limp PP. Uh, he's claiming that's an issue last night. Power played terrible as well. 0 for 2 and the Blues getting one with the man advantage. Uh, they had a lot of two men. A lot of, I mean, Blues had a lot of chances with two men up, and and the Oilers did not bad man down, but uh, 0 for two with the man advantage as well, thanks to Strummy. Thirty eighth star of the hockey game last night. I mean, there is somebody that fits the criteria. There's zeros across the board, but I've loved this season. He's been a steady Eddie a few times. We just Warren, talked about it yesterday. Warren Fogle had yeah. zeros across the board. I've yeah. said all year, like, Fogle is probably the guy that flies under the radar more so for me than anybody from a positivity perspective this year. But uh, I can't just look at it and go, well, you know, Fogle's kind of been my guy all year. I mean, what am I supposed to do? So, uh, yeah, zeros across the board for uh, for Warren Fogle last night. I guess he'll be your 38th star of the better, hockey game. Better nights than worse nights, though, for one WF this season. And you're right, like that's, as you mentioned yesterday, not a lot of mornings we come here and see zeros across his line. 
Steady Eddie of the evening. You know, I don't know if this is, I don't know if people are going to be like, what the hell are you talking about? But can I make Stuart Skinner the Steady Eddie of the evening? Have at it. I, I know it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's an 897 when it's all said and done, and we're not going to chant 897. But. Tight game. I thought he played pretty well. I thought I thought Skinner made some really nice saves in this hockey game. You know, in overtime, anytime you kind of open buddy up, slip one between the legs is a little cheeky. You're like, ah, that's a that's a tough one. But uh, yeah, I thought I thought Stuart Skinner was steady between the pipes last night for the Edmonton Oilers. Your thoughts on it? Seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine. Dry settle needs a maintenance day. Stupid penalties again that comes in from Richard Paris Jewelers inbox. Hey, maintenance day was in quotes just to uh, yeah. get that over maintenance there. day, yeah, yeah, which yeah. around here is healthy scratch yeah, that yeah. nobody <laughs> wants to talk about. Uh, probably not going to be the case, Richard. Probably not going to be the case on that one. Christian in Winnipeg this morning says, "Guys, upon further review." Today's morning show, uh, morning after show song, used to be played win or lose. Remember, it was for the longest time until yeah. we dropped the uh, good morning after show That's song. That's a hell of a review. You're taking this one back. Yeah. How about Tommy Rabella? After video review, the call at the altar has been overturned. Both parties are single. Please turn back the clock 10 years. Can you imagine that? Oh. Toronto would have a hell of a time trying to get that clock turned back. Hey, that, yeah. would, that would be, uh, that'd be a lot. That'd be tough to do. Please add 10 years back to your life. That'd be something. <laughs> uh, all right, let's Stuart Skinner. Let's hear from Stuart Skinner here on the uh, morning after show for EM Utility Locating. Here's what Stewie Skins had to say after the game last night. That night and the strangeness of it. I mean, there seemingly was uh, a review every five or ten minutes or so. Maybe just take us through the rhythm of that game. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a long game. Uh, I think the refs had a couple, uh, you know, tough choices to make. Um, and, you know, so sometimes the game kind of happens like that. Uh, but, yeah, you just got to do your best to keep momentum on some sort of way. Uh, momentum wasn't on our side today. We uh, obviously, um, I thought the guy interfered with me. And uh, really hard for a ref to see it. But, um, yeah, and then obviously we got a penalty. Then we're on the PK for basically the whole second period. Gave up a five on three, four on three. So, um, momentum was definitely on their side, and I thought we did a good job on being able to gain it back. Did you feel the stick hit both your blocker and your right pad there? Yeah, I felt the pad, like, he kind of stuffed me in the pad, and then because just how his stick's made, he's a pretty tall guy, so the shaft didn't allow me to get my blocker kind of down to the puck. Um, so that's what I was frustrated with. Um, really hard for a ref to see it, um, so I understand his point of view. Um, cause you can't really see underneath my blocker, but, uh, it kind of catches my hand and I'm not able to make a save. So, um, but I mean, that's the game. I mean, there's tough calls to be made and, uh, sometimes it doesn't go where, go your way. Yeah, you can't blame them. That's a very tough job to do. And after the, the TV timeout, you and Connor McDavid went over and talked to the ref. What was the explanation that he gave you? Did he just not see it? Yeah, I think he, I think he just kind of saw that, um, there wasn't a ton of action between me and him and, uh, his explanation was just he wasn't trying to interfere. Interfere. He was trying to get a tip in, um, and I mean that's. I'm guessing that a lot of people who do that aren't trying to interfere with the goalie. They're trying to obviously get a goal in. So, um, but yeah, um, again, like I'm not blaming the ref. I mean, I wouldn't want to be in that position if I was him uh, for sure. What was the difference tonight, Stu? Uh, I think um, it's a great question. I think we lost momentum in the second period. I think we gained it back in the third. Uh, and then in overtime, I thought we just kind of um, made a mistake and I wasn't able to bail a guy out. Um, and that's, uh, that's work for everyone to do. I honestly think, I mean, the way the game went, uh, we gave up a couple odd man rushes that kind of took us apart, uh, especially for them to get the lead in the third period. Um, but besides that, again, like we showed our maturity. We came back. I didn't get a shot for like the rest of the period after that goal. It kind of felt like, and then we get back and two two, we get a point out of it. So, a lot of credit go, go, goes out to the guys in front of me and how hard they battled just to get a point. So, there you go. That is Stuart Skinner after the game last night, making his case. Also, you know, not hanging it on the officials, like he said. You know, I wouldn't want their job either. Making his case, I thought what the officials said to, to him and McDavid, like he clarified there, basically saying that they thought he was getting a stick in there for a tip as opposed to like trying to interfere 
with Stuart Skinner. I think it just happened so quickly and it was so minimal that it was going to be tough for them to, like, even on the reviews that we saw, there really wasn't a review where you could have been like, there it is. Yeah. That's it. So it happened so quickly. I'm I'm a little surprised that, well, I mean, do we like the Oilers taking their goalie's word for it and being like, Skinner says he was... Because if they would have looked, they, well, they would have. By looking at the replay, and they would have only had a couple of quick looks at it, you're looking at it, do you actually think that was going to get overturned? I don't think anybody ever thought that that was going to get overturned. It was it was a challenge that surprised me a little bit, I yeah, guess. Where's Kupal when we need him, eh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but no, I mean, sometimes, well, I mean, look, the goalie, you're, you're going to be fired up, you're on the ice, you're playing, you're, you're going to be confident in the fact that, you know, what you think and what you see and what's happening in your crease, you know, when you have a handle on. So I don't know, sometimes to take, ah, it's, it's a tough one, but again, it was, it was, you're straddling that line of minimalism where it's, again, it's your word against his. And if the ref's not in your position, he truly doesn't know. <laughs> He's just watching. And if it's not blatantly obvious illustrated on the video, then you can't call it. I think it's also, it's not a hot take, but I don't think Stuart Skinner will ever be fined in his national hockey league career. Yeah, you know, like he's ever going to say something where people are like, well, "Damn you, Stuart Skinner!" He, he had what are a you chance thinking? to light him up, but it's a tough job. So that's that's good for him and yeah. very polite man. Yeah, gaining that's a Stuart few credits Skinner. for maybe a future challenge. Also, does anybody have a picture of what Stuart Skinner looks like without his mustache? Like even from his days in the Western League, or has he just always had the stash? Don't want to know. I don't want right. to. I don't want to. Like I, I'm watching like, that video. I'm like, I don't know if I want to see him without a mustache. I like, assume it's the first time you shade your chin strap in front of your children, and they cry and say, "Who's that? Who's yeah. that man?" Like you don't. You yeah. Don't well, I mean, when Marshall, when I was when Marshall was born, I had the chin strap. <laughs> you had the strap, man, chin and strap, and daddy. I quit being so damn polite, Stewie. That comes in from bones. Uh. Chris from Fort Mac says there have been a lot of weak interference goals called against the Oilers. There is a precedent to overturn that. Yeah, and, and last night's not just the only game and the only reviews that have happened, and I think that's what irks Oilers fans is you see some other cases and examples around the league where you're like, hey, but this is the NHL, and this is the officiating that, uh, this, is what you, this is what you get. Jay's and it says they challenge that because they just made a similar BS call at the other end right before. Jay, you're gonna probably not like my hot take from earlier, but I thought they got both of those. In. I thought I thought they got the calls right. But they're not gonna both give of them you right. If you're getting into that, if if you think they're gonna give you a call, like that's it ain't happening. Do you know what I'm saying? Like that's the way to approach it. Be like, well, they just did that. Yeah, like so it's challenge over here. You're already now. Know. You're behind the eight ball already, and it's never gonna work out for you. And which I get, but I get the attitude. I, I get the thinking there. I, I get the frustration, but. We talk. We've been talking a lot about the. Uh, the one against Skinner. Earlier in the show, we did talk about the other one, the other way, where I thought they may have had a case that Bennington had a chance to reset and put his legs back together and then opened it up. There was still, I mean, the Hyman contact did move him slightly to his right. It's just, you got to stick with it. Like, if you're going to come yeah. playoff time, you can't be like, well, it's playoff hockey, so you're allowed to dig a little harder here. You just... It's frustrating. How many I goals does Zach Hyman actually have this season? Yeah, well, or or like, doesn't have, or whatever the case is, right? Like he'd be that, pushing at 70. Yeah. <laughs> like that. The consistency, again, yeah, that's what I think that any, every fan and every fan base can come together on. Want to get to this text. Good morning, guys. It's Rob. So did anybody know that Matthias Ekholm was this good? The guy is a beast. Played unbelievable on the penalty kill. The best pickup that we've had besides Zachary Martin Hyman. Now, this is a weird text because he uses his middle name, which makes me think it's Gazola texting in, yeah. but he also uses we, which makes me think there's no way Tommy would send in that text. But Ekholm, where are they? I, was, I threw this out. The guy I was watching the game with last night. Where are they without Matias Ekholm? Like, what are the Edmonton Oilers right now without Matias Ekholm? Are they second in the division? Are they a wild card team? I, I I tell you right now, without Matias Ekholm, they have no chance at winning a Stanley Cup. Wow. None. And we can discuss the varying degrees of chances to win the Stanley Cup right now anyway. But without Matias Ekholm, zip. He's a cornerstone, cornerstone piece. He's... When they got him, you're like, oh, this could be a really good fit. But he has been... Better than expected by me, significantly. And I was still expecting him to come in and be pretty good. 
But I mean, he's been outstanding. No Eric Carlson. <laughs> well, just, just saying. We, we did get a picture of uh, a stashless Skinner. Oh, gross. It's disgusting. Is, it, is, he, is, he, is he a it, baby? It's ruined my ear. <laughs> yeah, it's just not good. Oh, yeah. I forgot people could say You see it there? Chris, oh, Chris my from God. It's what just is not, this? Yeah. No. It's not I mean, he's, he does look a little bit like you two, Trev. There's a bit like of a... With the yeah. stash and without the stash. Yeah. Stuart Skinner with short hair and no mustache? That doesn't work. <laughs> not having it. That doesn't work. The stash is even... Uh, I mean, some would say how lewd. <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh, I don't, I don't want to... Sit here and critique other people's appearance. No, yeah, we're not. But it just compared but to his gross. current look. Yeah, that's gross. Don't don't change, Stuart. Don't go back. All right, your reaction to the game last night. Keep them rolling in, guys. Look what happened. Look look to New Jersey to see what happens when you lose a key defenseman. They lost Dougie Hamilton, right? Yeah. Uh, Ekholm is McDavid like MVP. Hot take. That's in from guy who doesn't sign texts, and his actual handle is doesn't sign text guy. I don't even know if that's a hot take. I I, um, I almost said it myself about three minutes ago. I almost made the bold claim that Echo might be the true MVP of the team. I almost said it. Now that 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 it's going a little too far. Yeah, it's going a little bit too far. But but on the blue line, I mean, of course, that's that's not up for debate at all. But on the team, let me play this game. Let's, 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 most let's, valuable, not most outstanding. Again, we, we no, always get different. those terminologies and, and, mixed and, up. And McDavid is still the most valuable. Value, yeah. But yeah. you take Ekholm away from this team, yes. what are they? You take Dreisaitl away from the team, what are they? Like, is Ekholm on the same level as Dreisaitl as far as value to the team goes? I think you make a legitimate case for that. In I an area of the ice where you, you, where you it's arguably tougher to find help and tougher to... Tougher position. I mean, you can score goals, you can skate down the ice, you can I mean offense and everything. But now the best part here is you have both of them. You have yeah, both yeah, of them. Yeah, and they're not going anywhere. A true blue chip. We know how rare it was when they got him, mm-hmm. and and the search for him. Yeah, who is so? Uh, here's the easy question because some of you might want to make a case for Hyman this year, considering how many goals he scored. Who is the second most valuable player on the Edmonton Oilers? I think there would be some people. You know, you got that weird Bouchard. Some people absolutely love him. Some people yeah. don't necessarily love him. Who's the second most important player on the Edmonton Oilers? We know McDavid's number one, always will be. But who's the second most important player on this year's Edmonton Oilers? Well, look, just from this morning, I mean, somebody's already saying dry shuttles to get a maintenance day today. Uh, Northside Sandwich says, I might say Echo may be higher than dry saddle. I think we found our answer in Matthias Echo. I mean, again, Bouchard, you can you can say a fan base divided on him some nights. I, I think you can say a fan base divided on a guy like Leon Dreisaitl some nights, not most, some. Um, have we ever seen this fan base somewhat divided any any form, shape, or way on Matthias Ekholm? Unless I missed a day, but... He is as steady as they come on the back end. I know last night... Yeah, but whatever, got a goal and like, assist. Whatever. I yeah, mean, it, yeah. it's so whatever. That's Bouchard does the same thing, right? Every second night, but... I'd, I'd have to have him up there. I think Ekholm might be the answer. <laughs> Ekholm, he has come in, and now him and Nurse both played like 25 minutes last night. But he's taken so much pressure off of Darnell Nurse That's on the left side. just what it is, yeah. And Bouchard is not Bouchard without Ekholm. It's, it, he just, he's not. So... Yeah, I, it sounds crazy to not have Leon Drysaddle as the second most important person on this team, but the answer might be Matias. Well, Echo. if you only had one of McDavid or Drysaddle, the 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 conversation might differ. But what was the Oilers' record at the beginning of the year when he was hurt? It took about a month to recover and get up to speed. That text flies in as well. Four oh three. Fair point. Uh, lots of messages over on the nasty chat about Stuart Skinner being the number two most important piece because okay, if he goes well, down, you, you know, they could be in trouble. I think. But uh, right now, I guess you could say that. This text is in from Hot Take Kev. I talked about Ekholm with a buddy at the game. He is important as any player on the team, especially since our forward group is pretty deep and the decor not so much. 
Cody in the nasty chat says, without Ekholm, they may have given up on Bouchard by now. I mean, you're, it, much to your point of making nurse or, or taking pressure off of him, it's not just Ekholm, the individual in the blue line, but how he lets everybody else do what they're supposed to do, right? And not... We have to remember that the deal to bring Ekholm in moved the guy who was ahead of Bouchard on the sure, depth chart yeah. out. So there's a couple of different boxes that were checked there for Bouchard's game to be elevated. But I've said it a thousand times. If you love Bouchard and you think he's who he is and you're confident in his defensive game, how confident are you when he's not with Matias Ekholm? I mean, the answer can't be like 100% through the roof. People are like, I don't care. Play him with whoever. It's not the case. Ekholm has been the perfect piece for the Edmonton Oilers since the moment they got him. Lots of good text messages continue to roll in. Let's get to uh, let's get to this one. We'll go with this one, and then we got Craig Button coming up. We'll get to more of these text messages after we discuss things with Button. Dry settle is sometimes inconsistent. Ekholm always seems like he's on his game, which is another for now. It's probably I don't I don't I don't even know. I'd be making a claim here. Is it easier to be on your game when you're steady, powerful, stay at home D man? Even though offensively he's been good lately, or I think it might be tougher to look like you're on the game all the time if you're Leon Drysaddle with what you expect from him. But yeah, and that, yeah, fair discussion uh, nonetheless. Keep these rolling in seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine. It's a fun question. Who is the second most important player on the Edmonton Oilers? And we'll get to that with Craig Button. He's going to join us coming up here just after seven o'clock this morning for Pro Am Sports. Uh, we do have confessions coming up around 7.30 this morning. Vegas keyword in 45 minutes. You do not want to miss that. And I says pardon. We'll get into a little Elks discussion during I says pardon around 7.45 today. Right now, we've got a sports update with Lieutenant Eric. Oilers coming up short down in St. Louis. They drop a 3-2 decision to the Blues in overtime, snapping the Oilers' three-game win streak. Edmonton will remain on the road. They'll visit Dallas tomorrow. Other action last night, Islanders with a 4-3 overtime win over the Flyers. Blue Jackets defeating the Avalanche 4-1, Leafs over Florida 6-4, and the Jets snapping a six-game slide with a 4-3 home ice win over the Kings. Toronto Blue Jays taking one on the chin down in Houston. They dropped game one of a three-game set to the Astros 10-0. Ronel Blanco tossing the first no-hitter of the season. Game two goes later tonight. First pitch, 6-10. Women's March Madness last night. So number three, UConn over number one, USC, 80-73. Caitlin Clark, meanwhile, made nine threes, finishing with 41 points, leading the Iowa Hawkeyes over LSU, 94-87. Devin Booker at 52 points as the Suns got past the Pelicans, 124-111. Raptors will look to snap a 13-game slide tonight when they host the Lakers. It's one of nine games around the NBA. Over to Curling Canada's Brad Gushu with a 7-4 win over New Zealand this morning at the Men's World Curling Championships. Canada sit at 4-1 with a date against the USA later this morning at 11. AJHL playoffs second round action will continue tonight. Drumheller hosts Calgary. The Canucks up two games to none. Canmore welcome in Whitecourt. That series tied at a game apiece. Sports update brought to you by the Century Casino Sports Bar and Lounge, Century Casino Fort Road, your home for the final week of March Madness as the Final Four gets set to battle for the National Championship. Catch all the action at the Century Casino Sports Bar and Lounge. The Nielsen Show featuring Lieutenant Eric. Only on Edmonton Sports Talk. Seven oh two on the Nielsen Show. Thank you very much for being with us this morning. Your thoughts on the Oilers and Blues, of course, the Paris Jewelers inbox right now at seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine seven eight zero. 218-9999. We'll get to more of your reaction uh, from the game last night coming up here in about uh, 15 to 20 minutes. Keyword for the EST flyway to Vegas with Fly YEG. That's coming up around 745 today, and we'll get to your weekly confessions around 730 
this morning. You can hit us up in the nasty chat. If you're watching on YouTube, hammer the thumbs up for us. That would be great. And uh, like I said, text us anytime at 780-218-9999. We've got our hockey insider today, as always, brought to you by the great team over at ProAmSports.ca. Huge sports fans, just like all of you. They just added a signing with Mike Kersalniski. Dayarnay's deadline is tomorrow. Ryan Smith's deadline is on Saturday. They've got private signings galore over at ProAmSports.ca. If you haven't checked it out just yet, you probably should. Good morning, Craig Button. How are you doing today, sir? I am doing really, really well. How are you guys today? Ah, we're navigating our way good. through reaction after a loss to the St. Louis Blues and what I thought was a pretty good hockey game, but when you have so many video reviews, it kind of takes the buzz away from a game, does it not? Craig froze. No, he's just thinking. Or he's sitting very he's still. Deep, deep thought. What do you think about that, NHL that. video review, Craig? He's reviewing his answer, I think, is what it is. Craig will, uh, Craig will reconnect here <laughs> right away. But you're right, though, in, in terms of just the, the pace of the game. Like, it's all yeah. just chopped up, and I think Skinner and Tony were going off. Yeah. Right. All right, let's bring Craig back in. Craig, it was funny. We asked you about video review, and you just froze like this. <laughs> oh, can't hear. He's Zach, to come, can you uh, get the uh, audio? He says he can't hear us. Uh, it's a few minutes up here. That's on Are you muted, Craig? And reconnect again. We'll get Craig. We'll get Craig back. I think he well, he could hear us right at the beginning. Right? So we'll reconnect with Craig Button. I do want his thoughts. Craig's probably got a hot take on this uh video ruse. Sure I mean, but when it. you get it, when they get the calls correct, they got the calls correct. Like how much I thought they got the calls correct. How much can you actually uh have an issue with it? Let's try to bring in Craig Button again. Craig, you got us? I got you now. Uh, right, there we go. You, yeah. We're good. We 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 brought up video review and you froze like this. And we're like, he's thinking about it a really long time. Uh, but it just, it, it kills the momentum of a hockey game, does it not? Well, they don't take penalties. Yeah, like, yeah you know, the, that's a good point. The official's job is to call the penalties, call the infractions. You know, I was listening to a game the other night, and I forget who it was, but somebody said, well, this will probably be their last power play. There's 12 <laughs> minutes left in the game. I'm going like, how do you, like, you, like, are you a fortune teller? Like, fortune tellers have no idea what they're talking about, and he, you're going to know penalties. Like, I love where the officiating is at in the league. You know, there used to be all this stuff about, oh, you manage the game. Each referee had his own style. Now it's the rule book. You know, it doesn't matter. Finally, we're at a football-style rule book. If it's pass interference with no time on the clock in the end zone, the ball goes to the one-yard line. And I don't care what time of the game it is. If it's an infraction, it's an infraction. And I thought Chris Knobloch said it well. He said, you know, the the penalties took a lot out of our – out of our momentum and out of our flow, but don't kill, don't take penalties then. I, I thought the Oilers, Dustin, I heard you say you thought it was a pretty good hockey game. Yeah, I, I was going to make a joke when you said the action last night. I, I thought the non-action last night. It was, it was a good thing. I felt it was really good that I was able to watch the NCAA women's basketball <laughs> at the same time because it, like, it looked like, honestly, last night, it looked like Connor McDavid was playing the game with a tennis ball. I had never seen him. Yeah. Like, when he when he looks ordinary, it's like, oh, what happened here? Like, is he using a rubber stick? Is he playing with a tennis ball? I don't know. But anyway, it was one of those nights where uh, you, you had a team in St. Louis that needed two points. They had absolutely. to have it. They had to have yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. And that plays a part in it, too. They played hard. And, you know, for one of those nights, you know, for the Edmonton Oilers that you have. But uh, what I always look at in these games is does it now hurt their chances for first in the Pacific? Does it hurt their chat? You know, yeah. you know, now if you win your games in hand, now you're only, and, and you beat them, you, you, you're, you're two points behind. If you won the game last night, you win your games in hand and beat them, now you're tied. You know, and you're running out of runway. How important is it, do you think, to finish first in the, uh, considering, the like, you're in a, there's two pretty good wild card teams here anyway, so <laughs> you would likely avoid Vegas in a 2-3 matchup and play Nashville or the Kings. So how like, how yeah. important how important is it? I think in the East it's extremely important because you get these teams that are probably shouldn't even be in the playoffs. Yeah. But in the West, how important do you think it is to track down the Canucks? Good. I'm gonna. We'll talk about Tortorella in a minute. I'm sure. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. What what I would say is you're right. I, I mean the teams that are in the West right now. I mean, is there any advantage? I, I guess the only advantage would be you have home ice now. You have home ice. Uh, you know. At, at least into the conference final, if, if you if you finish in first, and that would be that would be the only advantage. Other than that, uh, there's probably not any other significant advantage because 
teams are teams are good. Teams are, you know, there's not going to be an easy out in the first round. There's not going to be an easy out in the second round. But in the in the East, there will be some easy outs. Well, Philadelphia. Well, we'll well, we'll, we'll save it. You're right. You're right. We'll get the okay. Tortorella. We were having a, we were having a conversation in the first hour of the show today, and it was more of a pro Matias Ekholm conversation than anything else. But we know Connor McDavid is the most important player on the Edmonton Oilers. Who do you think is the second most important player on the Oilers? Wow, that's Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Whoa! <laughs> well, oh, yeah. <laughs> Matthias Ekholm, Leon Draisaitl. I was just running through Zach Hyman. Yeah. I mean, and 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 I I I think it's too simple to say there's one next most important player. I mean, you look at the the, the way players, uh, you know, fit in and 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 work with one another and the, and the flexibility that they have. You know, last year at the trade deadline or heading into the trade deadline, and I I, I like Matthias Ekholm, but. Uh, I, I, I was really bullish on, on Jacob Chikrin, and I thought at his salary that he was a really good fit for the uh, Edmonton Oilers. Well, no, no, I'm not, I don't think he would have been a, a poor fit. I, I think he would have been a solid fit. But Matthias Ekholm, Ken Holland hit it out of the park. He hit it right out of the park because th- that type of defenseman, the way he has bolstered a blue line, and, 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 and that's what he's done. He's bolstered a blue line. I think Jacob would have added to a bol- blue line Matias has bolstered it. He, he's added strength in significant areas of the t- of, of, of the group and for the team. And, he, and he's so good and he's so confident. And, you know, I, I always think back, I don't know if you guys remember Magnus Arvidsson. He, he was a player that played for the Ottawa Senators, and they called him the mountain man because <laughs> he was big and strong. And I think Matias has a lot of that mountain man quality. It's like, you know, Oh yeah, well I can lift the the four hundred pound log. Oh, it's four hundred fifty pound log. I'll lift the four hundred fifty pound log. <laughs> I'll just quickly add to the Magnus. Magnus is very much a mountain man name. Well, it it's really the is, uh, Magnus right? Svensson from the world's strongest the metrics competition. Yeah, the they're, 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 yeah, yeah, that's what I'm thinking go. about. They're really strong guys. men. Strong men. Yeah. Uh, speaking of mountain men, Craig, uh, there was one in net for the Flyers uh, during the second. <laughs> that guy, I mean, that is, what is he, 10 foot tall? Um, but please, on the Flyers, John Tortorella, I mean, they, they fall in overtime. Get an all important point in that weird Eastern wild card race. Uh, let's go. Your thoughts on Torts, the, the mountain man and goal in the Flyers? Can I, can I give you the quote? <laughs> yeah, Here, yeah. Here's the Tortorella quote. There are certain people that don't have a clue how to play or just don't have it in them to play in these types of situations. Yeah, I think he said balls as well. Yeah, oh, that's good, too. you got to mix in one of those. Oh, 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 yeah, and he wasn't talking about tennis. Uh, <laughs> you know, when, when, when you think about it, like, hey, th- that's what this part of the season shows you. That's what this part of the season offers you, an opportunity to show what you have. And, 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 and John, you know, can be blunt and he can be pointed and certainly – you know, when he made his comment after that, he said, you know, this is why we're playing these players. This is why we're seeing what they can do and how they handle these situations. And I, I think that the next game is really important for those players. Because he basically said in the second period they had one player that played, and that was the big goaltender. And John said it wasn't really fair for me to throw him in there, and he was great. But you, this is where you evaluate your team. And this is in those hard games, in those hard moments. Like, who's got it? Like, who who do we think has it? And, and you're going to find out who doesn't have it because there's a lot of players that don't have it, and, and that's just reality. And I think John's bluntness, you know, creates some, some eyebrow-raising moments, but at the same time, what he says is true. What he says is true. I can tell you in back rooms and in coaches' offices and managers, when you're talking about the composition of your team, what comes up is, can they help you win? Can they help you win when it matters? Because it's not easy to win. What's the deal with this Fedotov kid? Not kid. I mean, he's been <laughs> around for a while, but he comes in as a giant. Anytime, anytime you like, what was he drafting? Like 2015, or like he's been, he was drafted quite some time ago. Anytime you get somebody from Russia, like you get him out of there, you deliver him. I saw, I know a few Flyers fans who are like, it's happening. I didn't think it would ever happen, but it's happening. How big is that? All puns aside. Yeah, seventh round, 188th overall. In 2000, 2015. 2015. That's what that, so how big is this for the Flyers? And what are the expectations for this guy? Because his numbers overseas have been absolutely lights out. Lots of goaltenders in that KHL have lights out numbers. Yeah. Don't be fooled by it, okay? Uh, like, we, we, we were here fooled. for a few years. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I know, yeah. I know, I know. So don't be fooled by those numbers. 
because you know, it, it makes the, the, that league makes goalies look really good. And that doesn't mean that they're not good. I mean, Shesterkin's a star in this league, and Vasilevsky's been a star. I mean, he came over a little bit younger. I mean, we're talking about somebody now that's 27 years of age, and certainly for the Flyers, you, you know, the right timing for Fedotov and, and for the Flyers. And and then his contract is terminated. Remember, he was coming over a couple of years ago before they made him serve military service and had the contract. So for the Flyers, I, I, it's somebody they wanted. It's somebody they they, they, they signed, obviously. And now we'll, we'll see what he can do. You know, my dear friend, Tim Bernhardt, who I look, worked with for a long time, one of the big things with big goalies is don't create big holes. Because if you're not technically sound and compact, because a big goalie has to be compact too, the the holes become bigger for a big goaltender. You saw that with Koskinen. And certainly for, for Dotoff, that's something he's going to have to work on, especially in tight, because the way they drive the net, the way they – uh, make plays in and around the net and squeak pucks in. If, if you don't close it down you're, and be leaky, you're going to be in trouble. Craig Biden with us on the show this morning for Pro-Am Sports. Uh, Craig, we were talking about this on our noon show yesterday, the O-Stream with myself and Gazzola. And the Vancouver Canucks, like the Oilers have been the best team in the league since they turned things around December, January, February, March. Outstanding hockey team. Still haven't been able to track down the Canucks because the Canucks just have not really given them much of a window to do that in considering the Oilers' record has been as outstanding as it is. What is it about the Vancouver Canucks that makes them so good? Like, what is the element of it with the Canucks that you think has kept them up where they are the entire season? Well, I think I think one of the things, and we just talked about it with John Tortorella, and I think that's one of the big things that Rick Talkett has, and has tried to instill in his team, a, a hardness, a, a, an, a, an ability to stay in the games when it's hard. And, you know, you, watch Connor Garland now. You know, at the beginning of the season, Connor Garland was somebody they were talking about trading. Connor Garland's a hard competitor. And now he's playing up in the lineup. He, he's contributing up in the lineup. You got Joshua, De, De, uh, Dakota Joshua. Yep. And just as a couple examples. And I, I think what Rick wanted to do was, hey, listen, we got to become, he talks about wall play. He talks about, you know, when you, when you get pushed, you got to push back harder. And certainly I think that that's, that's an element that I think he's really instilled in his team. And right now, you, the blue line became better. The blue line became much, much, much better. And, and and the Zadorov trade has helped and the Ronick trade, Hironic trade last year really helped. And, and and they got some competitors on that blue line. So you you wanna you wanna instill some hardness in your team, you better get some hard players. And and I think that that's absolutely what the uh, Vancouver Canucks did. And hey, they have skill and they they have an excellent defenseman in uh, Quinn Hughes, and they have some real top end talent. You know, it's amazing to me, and I don't think I don't think J T. Miller gets talked about enough. I think J T. Miller is the emotional barometer for that team. He's he's you talk about hard and competitive and in the fight all the time. He to me is their emotional barometer. It's not Elias Pettersson. Elias Pettersson might be their most well is their most talented player along with Quinn Hughes, but he's not their emotional barometer. I think these playoffs are going to be really interesting for Elias Lindholm or Elias Pettersson to see what he can do when the tidy when the checking is tighter, the space is smaller, and your time is reduced. Craig, before we let you go, you'd mentioned women's basketball, and we always say great players step up and do great things in great moments. And Caitlin Clark dropping 41 last night for Iowa against LSU in like a revenge game to get back to the Final Four after last year's national championship loss. Her range is ridiculous. She was just unbelievable to watch last night. Oh, well, she's the all-time leading scorer in Division One basketball. Period. Full stop. And and she was phenomenal on, on, on a huge stage. Angel Reese had twenty rebounds. Yeah. And was, was 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 like it. I mean, when you think about women's basketball right now in the United States, I mean, that's where the star power is. There's no star power in the men's uh, NCAA tournament. It's just teams playing and slamming it down and playing hard. The star power is all. I mean, you you think about Juju Watkins last night and Booker Bookers yeah. for. Uh, you for USC. I mean, it, it's all star power, and, and and I mean, it's absolutely unbelievable to watch it. And and you're right. You talk about lost him at the last second. That's okay. We'll let Craig go. Craig, if you're still watching, we're good. You froze on us, but that's okay. Fate and I know black. some people will be like, some people will be like, oh, that's what happens when you start talking about college basketball. But 
<laughs> he's not wrong. Like when you when you watch, like go watch, go watch Zach Eady, go watch Zach Eady, and different style of player than Caitlin Clark. But Caitlin Clark is way better to watch. Way better to watch. Craig, we're good, man. You can uh, you can go. Thank you very much for the time today. Uh, he's right, though. The star power. Like Angel Reese last night had 17 points, 20 boards. And she was playing banged up after getting injured in the first, uh, I think it was first quarter of that game last night. So it was uh, it was nice. It was fun to watch. It was the, the pace in that LSU-Iowa game last night was just outstanding basketball. Pace and, and a player yeah, like so, Clark, who's so good. You know, a little bit of Elias Pedersen, a little bit of JT Miller, right? You got you got the skill and you got the emotional barometer all in one. Full package. Uh, Craig Button, as always, all of our Hockey Insiders brought to you by Pro-Am Sports. Check it out, proamsports.ca. Looking at the site right now. You can't miss it. When you go there, Vincent DeHarnay, deadline for the private signing with Vinny is tomorrow. Ryan Smith is Saturday, April 6th. And then the private signing with Mike Krusilniski, the uh, deadline there is Saturday, April 6th. 20th. So if you've got any items that you would like to get signed or you want to take a look at what they can offer you over at Pro-Am, visit them online at proamsports.ca. Hell, even even uh, pop in, walk in and argue with them about reviews if you want, right? Like they're the, That's the type of shop you can kind of go in post morning after a game. Yeah, they'd love to Argue that. about the officials, the reviews. Yeah. Yeah, they, they should, I'm sure Jack and Ken would be really excited about that today. Yes. Hey, Talking if you're coming hockey. in for a signing, you're coming in for the signing right? yeah, to get some stuff there too. Yeah. But if you want to talk video reviews, that would be fine. Over in the nasty chat, you can tie, chime in as well. Oh, there's Do Fish Pee. Dustin is really stupid on these calls. Correct take. He must be trolling. The R and H was good. The R and H goal was good. It was blatantly obvious. Yeah, you idiot. Yeah, yeah. I'm so stupid. Uh, no, I thought I look. I even. I think they got it correct, but I did say I thought there was a window open when Bennington put his pads back together before he opened them after the contact. Yeah. I thought maybe that could be a window to overturn it or to allow the goal to stand, but uh, you know, they didn't, and I guess I'm stupid because of that. So You'll own it, though, hey? Good to see you. Hey, do yeah. fish be. If you're going to be here talking trash, at least give us a thumbs up today. All right? We could definitely, uh, definitely take that. That'd go a long way for us. So, hey, and anybody else watching right now, hammer that thumbs up over on Twitter. We brought it up with Button, and I don't. Are we selling Dry Settle short here? You don't want to sell a guy who's done as much and as good as he is short. But in terms of selling short, it's just that you run into this issue when you have a team constructed like this with those two stars on it, right? Like this isn't one guy's team. This is well, it's Connor's team. He's the captain, but Leon's right there. So I think Connor's always this untouchable piece, and and rightly so. And that's that's with your forward group. The team was crying out for help on the blue, crying out for that stud on the blue line. You had Nurse getting paid like one, but crying out for that true, legit stud. And and when he shows up at the door, it's tough to look at all the other toys that you've got in the right. Like, yeah, that's the thing. That's what you've been needing and wanting. And without him, are you even anywhere close to where you are? So, I don't think it's selling him short. It's just I think Leon and his time here is just you're you're part of something. It's just not you being that focal pointer piece. Who's the second most important player on the Edmonton Oilers? 780-218-9999. 780-218-9999. Is it Ekholm? Is it Dreisaitl? Is it Hyman? Is it Stuart Skinner? Who do you have as the second most important piece on the Edmonton Oilers as they head down the stretch and into the playoffs as a legitimate Stanley Cup contender. What is your answer to that question? 780-218-9999 or hit us up on the uh, nasty chat as well. Uh, Do Fishby says, thumbs down, I'm out. (laughs) What a character. What a character. Uh, This text comes in from Ducky and says, ah, it's official. Nielsen hates the Oilers. This is from guy who's glass half full guy getting called it as a homer half the time. Follows it up with loves the refs. Oh, that's so what it is. So he's got your hate plus your love. If uh, you follow the show for a long time, you'll know that I'm a huge fan of officiating. Oh, you love here's it. How, here's what you have to do. This is how you have to handle it, folks. Flip it. Flip it. If it's an exercise here. If, okay, if go Brandon on. Sod bumped Skinner to the point... Of Hyman bumping Bennington. 
Would you be the other way? Would you go, oh, no, 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 no. You know, you'd be sitting here this morning being like, you know what, guys? They got it right. I'm sorry. You just would. You would. So I got no time for it. I got no time for, like, the, 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 the hot Homer takes. I'm sorry. I thought they got both calls right. And I don't think they should have challenged the one, on, uh, the one against Skinner. I don't think they should have challenged it. I thought it was a waste, of a waste of a challenge, waste of time. Waste of time for all of us. And, and we should know again, you know what league these games are played in, and we know the landscape. If, if you think you're going to get, you know, correct calls, and I use air quotes to what you deem as correct, or any sort of game management uh, correctly, uh, it, it's just not there with the NHL. The, 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 the expect the unexpected. When a game gets in like this, when there, there's reviews coming thick and fast, just close your eyes and hope for the best. That's all, all you can really yeah. do. None of it is none of it's within Knobloch's control. None of it's within Skinner's control. You can even argue whether it's in Toronto's control. Sometimes I don't know, but you, if, if 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 you're showing up and it's not a call that that like if, it, if 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 it's the final play, the final kick of the ball, final whatever it is, if it's a call in that moment that really dictates the end of the game, triple overtime, whatever it is. But within a game like this, it's tight. I mean, you could have just you could have you could have been better. Well, I thought they still like, played pretty good. They didn't play bad. I and we're they not still coming in pretty good. I mean, again, they had but, thirty-eight shots on goal. But I think it'd be easier for fans to come in here and say, "Ah, oh, they're garbage. It's garbage effort." They play. And then you can you can you can beat on that. Well, you can't. They didn't play bad. They they played just good enough, but lost maybe due to a few calls going this way or that way. So it's a, it's a very thin line, and people don't like when you're on the. Uh, other side of that line when it when it's that thin. I get it. But when it comes to NHL fishing, this is just what it is. It may not make sense, but that's the point. Don't don't be hoping that it's going to one of these days. Uh this text is in it says, nah, both calls were correct. You're good, Dusty. Second most important is dry settle, and it's not even close. All right, so there's there's a case for dry settle on the other side. I just think if if somebody told you, let's play this game for a second. Now, the good news is that they have five five or six players who can significantly impact a hockey game. That's what so Craig that, trying I mean, to do, that yeah, exercise there. I mean, they do. Yeah. They're, they have it's just a, fun a lot question. of high yeah, talent, but it's a fun question. It's no, a fun, uh, debatable question. I'm not going to sit there and be like, you're wrong with dry settle, even though I think the answer would be Ekholm. But in a playoff series, in a playoff series right now, let's say you lost Leon dry settle for two games. Or you lost Matias Ekholm for two games. Ooh, Which one are you more worried about for losing for two games in a playoff I don't series? think you even need to put up a poll for that one. Some, some would argue sometimes you do miss Leon for a game or two a series, right? Like oh, it, careful. Well, careful. I'll just put that to your point. Uh, uh, Ducky chimes but in again. But you would be more concerned about losing Ekholm for games three and four of a playoff series than I think Leon Dreisel. Absolutely. I think so. I tell mean, me, tell me how you wouldn't. Tell me, tell me and explain to me how you wouldn't. I'm here for it. Darnell Nurse is going to have to play 30 bloody minutes. the answer, yeah. Uh, like he used to before they brought in Ekholm. Bouchard, what, what are you doing with Bouchard? Like, what are you going to play Bouchard and Kulak together, I guess? I think, to, to quote Noodles, a dog's breakfast back there, in a sense. Um, Ducky chimes back in. You're not selling dry short. You're just showing that even though he's a stud and uber important, you have other pieces that when push comes to shove, exactly. you need just a little more than dry. Ekholm brings something they haven't had since Pronger, which makes his other D-men better and allows Skinner to become more confident, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's that, it's that cascading effect that Ekholm brings to that blue line, um, to which, again, dries, and, and there's lots of weaponry up front for this team. That, that's, that hasn't been a concern. Craig did point it out, and I saw some people earlier today talking about the ice yesterday, too. And that ice in St. Louis was garbage last night. I could factor into it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Penner's Pancakes. It was a weird game. Chalk it up to that. It was a weird game. They'll get amped up to play the Stars tomorrow. Yeah, I, thought they, I thought they played fine last night. Like, yeah, whatever. You're you not going to win them all. You, you get a point. And maybe that's just what that game deserves in the end. This is a good text. Could get in the mix for A&W. Text of the day today. Two juicy mamas. For nine ninety nine, <laughs> perfect, guys. Ekholm is Buzz Lightyear. All the toys were initially worried about their rank in the pecking order, but now they see how valuable the new toy is. <laughs> Had a, not seen like that, that comparison <laughs> ever. <laughs> for the kids, I like it. But I, yeah, you know, you kinda, I've yeah, watched yeah. Toy Story four was like our pandemic movie, so I watched. I've watched Toy Story four. I'm not even exaggerating when I say like a hundred times. So who's the Mr. Potato Head of this team? That's what I. That's my, that's my question. Ryan McLeod. 
let's do the whole roster and the whole yeah. cast here. I, uh, no, I want to take the uh, rankings of importance, which we usually do on the oil stream in the offseason with Tommy. McDavid, I would go McDavid, Ekholm. Is Yanmark still in the top three? I, I, no. <laughs> That's a classic Tommy joke. He does love him. Uh, McDavid, Ekholm. Skinner slash Dreisaitl in there. I'd like, still uh, maybe go with Skinner. Not, and this isn't who's a better player or whatever. It's no, just in terms of how importance, importance to the team. I feel like every goalie in the league should be in their top three for importance to the team. So think about how good the Oilers are that we're sitting here being like Leon Dreisaitl might be the fourth most important player on that's, this team. Yeah, that's that's kind of this the, is a this is a this is a lesson in in top end depth. That's what this is. This is a positive discussion. And then you go Zach Hyman for yeah. sure. Yeah, at five. And then what do you then are you going Fogel. like Bouchard nurse 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 Bouchard somewhere in there Bouchard nurse yeah Hyman Bouchard nurse you then you get into some really mucky debates there yeah but that's I, where hey. yeah <laughs> that's you're wading into that water you're like is there an alligator down here yeah, yeah. or not it's you just, just don't know because it's July so show muddy or and murky hey? yeah. what say you seven eight zero two one eight Penner's pancake says guys in order McDavid Drysital Ekholm Connor Brown Stuart Skinner he has Nurse in seven. He's got Nurse uh, in seventh there. No mention of Bouchard in there, eh, Penish Pancakes? That's not going to go over very well. I'm going to out you to well, everybody. This is where the, uh, I'm going to go on Twitter right now and say, Penner's Pancakes hates Evan Bouchard. That's what it means. And that'll be the end of you. That'll be the end of your days right there. Just like you love NHL officiating, as was yeah. professed earlier. Yeah, this exactly. Morning. Dusty's a ref lover. Yeah, loved him. Oh, my God. <laughs> I legitimately hate officials in every single sport. That is just how it works. Uh, all right, let's get to your cool bed hotline of the day. And we got a sports update. Then we've got your keyword in about 15 minutes. Confessions on the other side here of uh, 7.30 today as well. And I says pardon at 7.45. Gager's going to pop on around 8.25. We'll get his thoughts on the uh, goaltender interference because he's a goalie. So it works out very well. Yeah, give him his gavel. He'll have the final ruling on yeah. all that, hey? Hey, I guess Connor McDavid bucked us off that Shetland pony. You've been, you've been, uh, how, how is it Damn. down there in the dust? <laughs> down there in the dirt, Pick hey? Get myself hey. back up and yeah. get back up on this. That's what you do, right? This, this bronc. Uh, cool bet hotline of the day for today. Uh, what is the spread in the Lakers Raptors game? Oh boy, you're going to do it, eh? Oh, I'm only, doing it. Only. I'm doing it. We're going away from the National Hockey League tonight. The Raptors suck. Terrible. I'm going to go Lakers minus 11 and a half points tonight in Toronto against the Raptors. And roll with the uh, roll with uh, the goat and his Los Angeles Lakers minus eleven and a half tonight for Lakers your Kings Thunder Sixers. A couple other good. Games How many was it? Thirteen in a row for the Rap? Yeah, yeah. Like it's it's yeah. It, it dwarfs any other win or losing streak around the league right now. So, you know who else I might look at? Uh, oh, player totals are not. We'll get into that in the lock shop a little bit later on today. But I'm liking a D'Angelo Russell over. Because I am a D-Gen. If you've not checked out Discord yet, apparently Discord's where all the buzz is happening. All the it's cool bumping. kids are on the Discord channel. I uh, think they're already planning next year's April Fool's bit. Probably. <laughs> probably. That's a hilarious thing to do to us. Uh, so we'll have to tweet out the link to Discord, but apparently the Discord chat's a real good place for AM Nasties to, uh, to have some fun if you're uh, looking to take your fandom of Edmonton Sports Talk to another level. Let's get to a sports update on the other side. Feel like we got maybe like a Creed Tombstone remix coming at you. How lewd. plus confessions, plus the keyword for Vegas, plus I says pardon, all on the way. But right now, a sports update for Park Mazda. Oilers getting a point down in St. Louis, dropping a 3-2 decision in overtime to the Blues. Oilers' three-game win streak snapped in the process as well. Edmonton on the road. They'll visit Dallas tomorrow. Other action last night. Toronto over Florida, 6-4. The Islanders with a big 4-3 overtime win over the Flyers. Blue Jackets over the Avs, 4-1 in the Jets, snapping a six-game slide with a 4-3 home ice win over the LA Kings. Toronto Blue Jays will play game two of their three-game set with the Astros tonight down in Houston. First pitch, 6-10. Blue Jays opening that series last night, getting shut out 10-zip. Ronel Blanco tossing the first no-hitter of the Major League Baseball season. March Madness 
women's portion of the tournament last night. Number three, UConn over number one, USC, 80-73. Well, Iowa, led by Clay Caitlin Clark, she made nine trays, finishing 41 points. Hawkeyes take it over the LSU Tigers, 94-87. Devin Booker at 52 points, leading Phoenix over New Orleans, 124-111 in NBA action. Nine games around the association tonight, one of which will see the Raptors looking to snap a 13-game slide at home to the Lakers. Canada's Brad Gushu victorious this morning, 7-4 over New Zealand at the Men's World Curling Championships. Canada with a record of 4-1. They'll take on the USA later this morning at 11 o'clock. Second round action of the AJHL playoffs will continue tonight with a pair of games. Drumheller at home to Cal but the Canucks up two games to none. Canmore welcome in Whitecourt. That series tied at a game apiece. Sports update brought to you by the great staff at Park Mazda and Mitch Lewicki, where Mitch Lewicki guarantees a review process with every vehicle purchased at Park Mazda. Hi there. If you're like me, you like to picture yourself in luxury, even though there's absolutely no way you could afford it. And if you can, well, even better. Thankfully, I picture myself in something that is luxury, but still absolutely affordable, like the all-new Mazda CX-90 from Park Mazda. With the new luxury features like facial recognition settings and quilted detail Napa leather seating, I can pretend to be comfortable with all of my proper settings activated without even touching a button, thanks to Mitch Lewicki and the great staff of Park Mazda. I like to picture Mitch Lewicki as a ninja fighting off evil samurai. Park Mazda, your dealer for life in Sherwood Park off Y Road, parkmazda.ca. I'm your huckleberry. Skin that smoke wagon and see what happens. No! No! How dude. How dude. That is a hell of a thing for you to say to me. You tell them I'm coming, and hell's coming with me, you hear? Hell's coming with me! Oh, it's the Nielsen Show. Messing around in the lab, are we, hey? Oh, this is messing uh, around. Yeah, I get lots of buttons and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Fun time. I get carried away a little bit sometimes. <laughs> But it was nice, uh, the merging of Creed Tuesday and Tombstone Tuesday. It's a beautiful, indeed. A beautiful, beautiful thing. It is, isn't it? Um, let's just see here. The Marlins still winless on the season. 0-5 oh, uh, to begin your Tuesday let's morning. Let's play ball, but hey, not today. Not today. Here. That's uh, any day. Uh, that's a tough one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. We've got the keyword for Vegas coming up in about 10 minutes. Right now, we've got confessions. Let's get to your confessions. Brought to you by Spectrum Rental, where they confess to betting on themselves for the last 22 years. God, that's nice. I like to hear that, you guys. Get all of your spring cleanup equipment, including aerators, power rakes, and lawn vacuums at Spectrum Rental. What the hell is a lawn vacuum? What is this? If I were to guess. <laughs> this is like an Electrolux? Like well... Or or one of those Dysons, right? Oh yeah, maybe yeah, yeah. Maybe maybe vacuum one. up the vacuum the lawn. <laughs> Aerators, power rakes, and a lawn vacuum. Oh, yeah. That's uh I'm intrigued. Well, I'm intrigued by the lawn vacuum. But you don't have to buy it. You I feel can like rent it's it. a fancy name for something that I already you just know. rent it though. Yeah, you just or rent you it. Just take it, take it for a test drive. Yeah, it's not spectrum buy all. Yeah. <laughs> That'd it's be spectrum rent all. Yeah. The rental. Where they confess to betting on themselves for the last twenty two years. That's good. Sometimes if you can be a little bit of a risky boy, you can bet on yourselves, and in the end, it uh, in the end it works out. So far, at least. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see where it goes from here. Uh, all right, what are you confessing today, buddy? What do you got? Um, I I must confess, and again, I I assume this is a safe place, and all. I I must confess that as I age, I I get more annoyed with holidays. Really? And I'm talking Explain. your. Uh, I'm not talking like your uh, your. Uh, your your run of the mill monthly stats like a family day or a, or a, I'm all I'm all up for having a Monday off or a, or whatever it is, but these holidays where it's like you know and the and the family and the, and the traveling and the and the and the and the the expectation. I have a what my wife. It's myself and my wife. Yeah. We're equals, and and we 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 live in a house and we have no kids. 
but we have lots of nieces and nephews now, and, and they all live in different. And so yeah, and then and I have parents, and she and she has parents, and she has parents that are divorced, so they live and do that. So so there's there's us two little people living in our nice little house, but when a holiday happens. We now have to, and NORAD pretty much tracks us. We, we fly around, yeah. we do all these things, and oh, where's Eric and Danny now? And, and so we, we do all these things, and we go out, and we, and we spend all this gas, and we drive, and, all this, this, this. And, and at the end of these holiday weekends, you still can't come away pleasing everybody, can you? You just can't. It's tough to do. So I'm just it's tough to do. Whereas I think if we had kids, people, oh, we come visit you. Yes. We come see you. But Nobody now, wants to come to you now. No, but why, would, why would you want to come to us? It's just, yeah. just me and her sitting around, you know? Living life, kidless, making making angels in our money on the floor. Right, we're laying down. There's so much money. We just You're have dinks. tons of money. You're dinks. We're, we're dinks. Double Ex- income. We no are kids. Dinks. We Double are dinks. dinks over here. So who wants to actually spend their holiday traveling the 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 Canadian prairie to see a couple of dinks? I wouldn't. But I'm just saying, in our situation right now, currently as it is, I never thought I'd get to the point where yeah, the 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 the, the Christmases, the Easter's, the um. Uh, the, Kind of weird thing. Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah, that type of thing. Yeah. Where it's supposed to be a little mushy. I just don't. I like normal time. I'm a big normal time guy. I think Zach Team and I were talking too. I'd, I'd like to work seven days a week. I don't like taking time. You, know, you get time yeah, off. Yeah, you get yeah. a little yeah. out of the mental game. So I, I'll, I'll take the stats. I'll, I'll take your Victoria days. I'll take. I'll even take your Canada days. But it's the holidays. But yeah. those holidays, I just. I'll See, stay here to work. Can, I, I Canada Day weekend can become a thing too. Canada but it's in the summer. So to me. That nah, is different. And my mom's birthday is is the day before. Okay, there's a bit of a thing going on there, and then and then but you go to you go to like a lake or something, or or it's part of your summer holiday. Yeah, yeah, yeah as a whole, that's different. Yeah. yeah, but these these where you take the like ah, just and Easter like I just I don't know I wasn't feeling it. We didn't have like any. It's not like it's not like a couple of dinks hide eggs around their house yeah, and yeah, go yeah. look for them, right? <laughs> like, would you be doing that? Like, it's, quote it, clip it. It's not like a couple of dinks. <laughs> Right, dinks. Dinks is such a good word. I love it. It's a really yeah, I love yeah, it. yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's yeah. used in soccer as well. You can dink the ball over. Yeah, the well, yeah, yeah, dink and dunk. Dink, 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 who's a brother that you're oh, forced to spend time with on uh, <laughs> holidays. Uh, uh, he says, guys, I must confess, I'm really looking forward to a Wednesday. I, I, we already I had should... some people text in and be like, who the hell are you? What are you doing here? It's, it's going to be a lot of fun. To hell with Creed Tuesdays. I know. Or yeah, Tombstones, yeah, yeah. whatever it's, the hell you want to call it Wednesdays now. Is Wednesdays gonna be really are, good. is where it hits now. Yeah, we're really excited for that. Uh, Jasmine is in and says, confessions, I'm worried we will catch the Canucks. And was secretly secretly satisfied with just one point, so we will stay in second place. I, I subscribe to I subscribe to your newsletter, Jasmine. I I'm I've been saying this. I think this team is better when they're when they're not. Well, if they catch the Canucks, people are like amazing season run by the Oilers. They go from the bottom to the top, and now only the cup is what they. It, it and everybody things, will be like, saying that. And everybody, and yeah. I'm not saying that that's going to be what they're saying in the room either. But that does bleed in. I just. I just think this team is better when they're punching up and and they're chasing that carrot instead of nibbling on it. What do you need to confess? 780-218-9999. My confession is I had uh, had four beers last night. And I don't don't usually drink beer. I usually drink like spiced rum and Diet Coke. And then sometimes I'll drink spiced rum and Diet Coke. Like that's that's all I ever drink, or diet coke with a bit of spice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes yeah, 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 yeah. D- varying degrees and levels of concoctions <laughs> of mixed sp- spiced rum and diet coke and ice, maybe. But yeah. last night I was watching a game with a buddy, and I had four beers, and I was just like, man, I don't. Th- I can't. Here, I guess here's my confession. I don't remember the last time I sat down and drank four beers. Um, may I ask, can, bottle, pint? What are you getting this off the, uh, pint. Off the draft? Okay. Yeah, four, four so pints of draft. Stronger. That's a, well, sometimes, draft. so this is probably the worst part, is sometimes when I have, like, like two beers, I'll have a headache when I wake up in the morning because I just usually don't drink well, the you're beer. You're not used to it, yeah. And uh, I feel fine this morning. I was a little tired, but uh, I feel fine this morning. But, yeah, I don't usually drink. But I had four beers last night. Four Can you believe me? Four beers. Four beers. Usually I'll have, like, a dozen Spice Rum and Diet Cokes. And it's fine, but I had four beers last night. I was like, look at me, a beer drinker today. And a Monday, too. And a Monday, like four beers on a Monday? What am I? Blues Oilers from St. Louis, and this guy's pounding four pints. I I don't know. Like, Tam, she's watching now. She's probably thinking, you're a wild animal. 
That's what she's probably. She might be. She might be leaving me after having the four beers on a Monday night. You know, it's uh, it's tough. But uh, Tube Socks is and says, "Geez, I usually have four beers by five thirty yeah, daily." Yeah, Tube Socks is. Yeah, he's a different. Uh, yeah, I don't drink uh, like the most built beers. Different. Probably the last time I had that many beers was when we were doing our watch party and we we're crushing six o'clock or lagers. Yeah, those like days. I usually I'll have like one or two six o'clock or lagers. Then I'll have some spiced rum and diet. So that's it, how it works. It's timing so. and situational. I think when we were setting up uh, Edmonton Sports Talk here, you know, we'd we'd be here long days, and you'd you'd yeah, you know, you all that work. Ah, I'm a little thirsty. You have a beer or two each and every day, right? But then you get into the mode and you get into routines and sometimes, but it's good. Look, I, I think I celebrate you going out and, and switching the palate up a bit. Yeah, I, I don't mind this because now you're, 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 you know what it takes. You, you've been there. You've Does done it that. change it, your opinion that they were raspberry ales? <laughs> I, it shouldn't. I mean, it's, it's, okay, it's, I was look, just it's an ale. It's, like, it's not like it's, it's a, a fruity beer, but yeah, it's an ale. I mean, I was pretty proud of it. You like to appear with fruit, though. That's where you get most of your nutrients is in your beer. Well, my favorite, you get an orange my, spice my, with my, my two favorite beers right now are six o'clock or lager because it's delicious. You know my buddy uh, Potsy out at Pots Bar and Grill. Yeah, he's now gone through eight hundred liters <laughs> of six o'clock or lager. Eight hundred liters. He's on like his. <laughs> he's just tapping the sixteenth or seventeenth keg or something like That's that. That's eight hundred one liter bottles. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. He told me he goes. Imagine like this: four hundred two liter pop bottles full of six o'clock or lager. That's what they've had out there. Like six o'clock or lager is delicious. Shout out, Alley Ouch. Cat. I know that's a, that's yeah. a, that's some volume. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. Uh, confession: My wife wanted to get a sauna, and I thought it was a silly idea. Now that we got it, I have used it every day since, and it's amazing. Do I tell my wife? What's it like some secret sauna? She doesn't know that you're using it every day. What is, is this? He doesn't want to tell her because he'd be admitting that she was right. Is this the? Is this what I, I'm understanding I, I think, here? Yeah, whatever what it is. I think the sauna is such a the sauna is a game changer. It's a life changer. Uh, if if she's gifted you that, uh, yeah. No, is this like a wooden sauna? Take that her he's out to Mr. Mike's. Is that what it is? A, good, a different type of sauna. It, it, there's lots of different. Yeah. You, you can have just the the individual where you like it's like a tent and you slide it over yourself and you just sit in there and sweat. I'd get claustrophobic. I'd be sweating hot and. I wonder if you can rent those at Spectrum Rental, your presenting sponsor of Confessions. Worth an ask. Yeah, let's uh, let's fire the team over there a message and be like, hey, guys, can I rent a sauna? And then if they don't. And a lawn vacuum. They might be able to point you in the direction of somebody who. They'll probably be able to look after exactly. you there as well. Uh, if you're starting that spring cleaning, you probably should be. Spectrum Rental. Has you covered? Go in there. Tell them you're an AM nasty. They're an AM nasty. You can make a bunch of hilarious conch jokes, and you'll have a great time. All right, let's get to our uh, yeah. Brad Anderson over there says, "Rain it in, Nielsen." I know. <laughs> yeah. I know. What's what am I going to do today? He's have a, another beer? He's like, an animal. He's an animal. Yeah, I uh, I'm, beer, I'm getting yeah. off the rails a little bit here. What am I going to do tonight? Usually, my Monday nights are spent working and watching the game, but uh, yeah. A little loosey goosey last night. A man about town. Uh, all right, let's get to your keyword. What word. did you do after? Get a donair? <laughs> no, I went home and worked. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's got a, it wasn't a crazy night. Uh, the EST Flyaway with Fly YEG. Four times per day, you get the keyword here on Edmonton Sports Talk for your chance to win a trip to Vegas. Two nonstop flights, three nights accommodations, tickets to a Cirque show, presented by Fly YEG and the LVCVA. Nonstop flights to over 50 destinations. Your sports trip starts with a nonstop flight from Fly YEG. Visit www.flyyeg.com. I mean, pick a sporting event, hop on the website. You'll see all the different nonstop destinations they have. Nonstop travel is the way to go, man. Connecting and waiting. Oh, are we going to make this plane? We're going to make this plane. I, oh, I don't want my luggage to get lost, so I'll take it here. No, fly nonstop. Over 50 destinations. Fly YEG. Dot com. Man. Today's keyword is, let's find out. This is like the word bird. I want Fred Penner's word bird to like drop it down I to I need us. it. I want it. Oh. Oh, this is a this is a good one. We'll do some impressions after this. Today's keyword is Elvis. <laughs> Text Elvis <laughs> to 780-218-9999. 780-218-9999. And if you text it in, we'll say thank you. Thank you very much. Elvis, E L V I S. Did you watch the Elvis movie? Which one? The one with Austin Butler. It like came out a few years back. Three, I have a, I have a performance of his from nineteen seventy something down in Maui. 
that I haven't watched yet. Really? On VHS? No, PBR. I, PBR? P- PBS. PBS, PBR. Ah, okay. I also have a friend named Elvis. Elvis Cambites. Loves, you, listens to the show regularly. Do you call him Elvis the Pelvis? <laughs> Isn't that what people call <laughs> guys named Elvis? Because he can shake that. Uh, and that was his a, thing. He's a sex uh, machine. Watch this. Listen to this. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> oh, you're Can you do the lip? Can you do No, I can't do the lip. <laughs> wash these pills down with some Diet Coke and rum. <laughs> <laughs> Was it Tommy that did the... Uh, no, Tommy does Rocky Balboa impression. Rock, he does a yeah, great sorry, Rocky. Tommy does a great Rocky Balboa impression for some reason. Although I'd like to hear Tommy's Elvis. Uh, he's got the looks. I'd like to see him pull off he's an got Elvis. The looks. Uh, E-L-V-I-S. Text the word Elvis right now to 780-218-9999. 780-218-9999. In uh, about uh, five, six minutes... Zach to come, we'll give somebody a call, and we will uh, have another qualifier here. We've got this week and three more weeks of qualifying before we give away the grand prize trip. Man, I really hope it's my buddy Elvis that qualifies today. That wouldn't would that, be weird. That, I mean, come on. That would be really weird. If, if ever there's a day, Elvis, pick up the phone. All right, best of luck. By the way, whoever does qualify today, when we call you, you have to say thank you. Thank you very much. It would. Yeah. That would make come sense. Come on. You know. That would make sense. Uh, all right, let's get into I says pardon. I says pardon for Lawyer Central. If you're a bad guy <laughs> or a good guy with a record, they'll help you. <laughs> good Clean. guys can have records too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, a lot yeah, of, there's, you know, nothing wrong. Like, you know, I, I misunderstandings. I saw a study the other day on TikTok <laughs> that eighty yeah. percent of people in prison are good people. That's what I saw. Yeah, but if you made a mistake in your past, you're still paying for it. You don't have to www.lawyer-central.com slash pardons or call one 288 8177 Or if you have any other legal issues, pardon aside, uh, go check them out. They've got lawyers across the country. Anything that you're dealing with, they can help you. one 288 8177 Okay, so the I pardon here is, it all, it's, it's basically Twitter exclusive, but... There was like a three down story or a CFL news story or whatever about the 20 interested parties in the Edmonton Elks. Okay. And I retweeted, I said, 20 interested parties for the Elks is great news. Like, it's great news for the league. It's great news for Edmonton. Now, I have been told that probably about half of them are kind of just nibbling around the edges, just kind of curious, sign the NDA, get some information. That's about it. You're probably looking at three to five extremely interested parties, but that's how it would be in any of these processes. Yeah. But there was 20 people who were interested enough that they said, hey, I want the information, I'll sign this, boom, boom, whatever. So, of course, I tweeted out, this is great news for the Elks. And then there were some replies, it was just like, well, first thing the owner should do is change the name back to Eskimos. And so then I tweeted out, I quote tweeted that and said, because they said right away that person was like, I will be back 100%, I will get my season tickets, and I only gave up on the team because of the name, but I will be back. Even though they suck, I'll be back. Okay. Um, so then I, I, I read, now if you go look, there's like 200 replies to my tweet about are these people who are saying that they'll be back and support the team again willing to follow up on it if they actually said, hey, you know, the new ownership. And who knows? There might be some owners who are like, I think they need to rebrand and go back. I, I'm not saying it will happen. I don't know that it could, but I wouldn't be surprised if there were some people of these 20 people in 20 interested parties who think the way to get them back to glory is to change the name back. Um, and the whole name change was always a weird discussion anyway. Uh, no, it was about money though. It was about sponsors. Sponsors and money. were in, like in the end, did. in the end money yeah. talks. So and that that's what all this is about. Kind of force the hand eventually. Yeah. But I'm very interested by the number of replies here from people who were saying, yes, Dusty, if they were to change the name back, I would buy again my six season tickets. I would, I would once again, you know, have a dinner, a table at the dinner. I would do the, like the, the amount of people who were actually coming back at me being like, yes, yes, I would. I dropped everything because of the name change. It surprised me. It surprised me. It really did that. There is still a significant amount of people out there who were vocal enough, at least, to be like, yeah, if they change the name back, I'm coming back. Which I don't think you hold your breath for. But the fact that people are still holding a grudge over the name change, I guess, is my ISIS pardon. I was just like, man. I still think if the, if the, if the Edmonton Elks are 12-4 and four next October, Commonwealth will be packed. Deliver a winner, man. Yeah. Like, you can say what you want about... 
it's pretty convenient to stop following a team and say you did it just because they changed the name when they also went how many home games without a win? 22 or whatever count it was? Them up, yeah. And the pandemic hit in the middle of it? Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I'm still not buying into some of it. I'm not. It wasn't the best timing, shall we say, although that just happened. It I was mean, a that's, perfect storm. The whole thing was absolutely. a perfect storm. Like, um, but good on you for, for, again, putting that out there, people giving their honest opinions, and you... Yeah, I just you I know, was a little surprised. Like There was a lot well, of people but, who were like, yes, I will. And I'm like, I still don't know if I trust you. I don't know if you would. Translating that to the public at large is is fine, and, and there are people out there. Look, there, there's lots of people. I'm sure there's lots of people out there that, that don't like the Eskimo name, the Elks name, and, and would maybe have a third option or something along those lines. But yes, it's a perfect storm. If you, as I've said, if you didn't have a team here ever, and somebody came to town and said, hey, we're going to give you guys a, uh, a pro football team and we're going to put it here at Edmonton and it's yeah. going to be this and we're going to name the Elks. It, it, it's a great brand. Unfortunately, it's followed all of this other stuff. And, and when you have the Eskimos, people think, oh, the Grey Cups. And you have you have this one-sided success, but with the Elks brand, you've had this other side of, of you know, whatever opposite of success is throughout. So it's it's been tough timing. But I... I, I st- I believe in the brand. The whole, the whole reason it was changed was due to money. If somebody buys the team and they're flush with trillions of dollars and they feel that they can name the team, you know, whatever they want to name it and sponsors be damned, well, then that's their prerogative, I guess. I just, again, this this decision was made because of money and it was a business decision. So there you go. As I've said before, the Ed- Edmonton at large is still represented with a football team. The history, the colors, everything else included aside from the nickname. So if changing it would bring people back, yeah, I, I'll, I'll listen to them and I'll, I'll hear them. I, I but like, again, I just I, I think that it's probably for that one game to say, look at me, I'm back, you changed the name. And then but they lose four in that, a row and you're not, you're not going the, the game It's the same anyway. old story because we, we, we were reading inboxes and texts prior to that and, and, and when, when the playoff streak was snapped and when things started to kind of go by the wayside, and again, the success they had over the years in making the playoffs, even in the CFL, which you can say, oh, nine, ten teams, was still something you could hang your hat on and as a proud organization. So things have changed, and they've changed a lot. But if the Edmonton Elks had won back-to-back Grey Cups... That's fine. It's nothing... It, it, no, yeah, and you I can just, still, I like, I understand there'd still be a handful of people that... that I, I, I do want for the traditional name, and I do want to shout out the one guy who uh, who said, "Dusty, it's not about not being the Eskimos anymore. It's about being the Elks. The Elks, the, an elk is okay. such a fumbly. Well, he's like, mm. they should have been the Eagles. <laughs> it's just like he's like, I would have supported them if they were the Eagles. I, I didn't like, mind Eagles at all. It's still either. the football team yeah. on the field, man. It's Edmonton's football team. You've got the colors. You've got the EE. I mean, they didn't have to come in here and change fundamentally everything about the organization." I would have taken Eagles, though, but people said, oh, yeah. yeah so I thought Golden Eagles. Eagles would have been pretty cool. Well, look, there's eagle, there are Eagles here in, in the city, yeah. in the River Valley. It, it's, a, it's a thing. Um, uh, but, yeah. It is back to the history of the team as well. Back in uh, 1922, they were called the Elks, briefly. A long, long, sure, long, yeah, long yeah, time yeah. ago, Please. yeah. Zacticum sliding in. Take that. With the facts. The people's elbow. Bam. Uh, this one says from Steven, the controversy to change it back would be more intense than when they originally changed it. I think more well, sponsors just... would walk in droves. Yeah, I don't even, I don't know why it's still a conversation, but it still comes up, still comes up quite a bit. Zulu, when they punt Chris Jones, I'll throw my EE back on. So now, now we're talking football. Now we're talking the X's and O's. Hey, Dusty, someone not supporting the team because of a name change may be the most childish take ever. Grow up. Fraser, that's in from Fraser, which I like to pretend is Will Fraser, who, by the way, is in today. For this, we'll pretend. The hangout today is going to be incredible. Will Fraser, Rob Tichkowski making his hangout debut. (laughs) That the hangout was made for Titch. So, super excited about this. It should be a lot of fun today. Yeah, like Ken said, I don't care what your name is. If you're 3 and 15 and 4 and 14, no one's supporting a losing team. Bingo. Well, but also, I think that's when teams do need your support. And I'll say that. And I know it's not easy to go and, and say and justify spending money on a poor product. But the romanticism of sports is supporting your home team and being there when they need you the most. And I think this organization has needed people over these last few years. It's now, there has been a pretty committed group that Absolutely. are still support. I don't want to. Absolutely. Like, and we see there you. There are still you. a lot I of hardcore you down fans. at the tailgate. Hey, yeah. It's great. Um, but yes, it's it's this is an organization that's had really good times for a long, long, long time. I'm a Rough Riders supporter. You want to talk about rough times? 
<laughs> Sit on my lap. I'll, I'll tell you a few tales. Um, but this is a tough time for the organization, much as we saw a couple of tough decades for the hockey team as well. But you got to you, you support them. You stand by them. You maybe don't spend as much as you would while they're successful. But you still got to have the teams back. They represent Edmonton. Uh, all right. Who's our qualifier for the EST flyway to Vegas today, Zach? Who do we got? We got a real Richard on the line. Richard. Yep. Real Richard. All right, let's go to uh, let's go to Richard this morning. Richard, congratulations, man! You're a qualifier today. Hey, Dusty, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Uh, Who would you bring with you? Uh, well, I might bring my wife. She's actually flying away to Vegas this coming Sunday with a friend. Okay. Or, or I might bring one of my EST halluders. Ah, a halluder like you. All right, man. Well, hey, thank you, thank you very much for playing along. Hey, you betcha. Great show, guys. All right, there you go. What's Rich, Richard. Real Richard? Real Richard. Not a Richard impersonator? Not, not a fake Richard. As Elvis impersonator? Is that yeah, oh, maybe is that what it is? That's a stretch. Anyway, congratulations. He's one step closer to uh, winning the grand prize trip down to Vegas. Go, Rich. Dwayne from Twice says, I agree with Fraser, Strummy, and others calling out those needing the calling out today. I, I, I hope that the Elks can put together a hell of a season so we can look at the attendance numbers if they are have a 750 winning percentage and be like, wow, look at this. They're still named the Elks, but a lot of people are going to watch them because they're, they're a good football team. Like That's what they need to have happen. I think that smooths a lot of things but over But as you there. said, it was the worst possible time. Well, for it, it was a it horrible was a time storm, to do anything storm, like that. That's what it was the pandemic. Yeah. It was a team that sucked. It was somebody Pressing. making the name change. And you're like, why is this guy making the call? And it's like, it was, yeah. It was, it was a little bit of a mess at the time. And I think they got some good people in place. And we'll see what ends up happening with this ownership. And hopefully they get the right people in place to take it to the uh, next step, regardless of the name. Seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine. 218 We do have a gift certificate. By the way, your next chance to qualify for the ESC Flyway to Vegas coming up on the Hangout today. Um, your odds of qualifying on the Hangout, the Lock Shop, and Two Guys and a Goalie greatly improved over the odds to qualify on the Nielsen Show. So uh, make, that, make that commitment. Make that choice in your day to be listening on iHeart, on TuneIn, at EdmontonSportsTalk.com throughout the day uh, to hear that keyword to qualify three more times today here on EST. We are going to play kind of easy trivia right now, which means we have a gift certificate to uh, Mr. Mike's Steakhouse Casual that's just burning a hole in our pocket. I'm dangling it. That's uh, that's what you want to get your hands on right now. If you'd like to play kind of easy trivia today, 780-218-9999, 780 Nine and uh, text Zach to come right now. Let him know that you would like to play kind of easy trivia today. Come win that gift certificate to Mr. Mike's Steakhouse Casual. Go to Mr. Mike's, get yourself a classic Mike burger, have a six o'clock or lager, and live your best life with Edmonton Sports Talk. Who wants to play trivia? 780 218 9999. Let Zach know, and we'll get to that coming up here just after eight o'clock. Three questions too many on the way. Joaquin Gage on the way as well. Gager will get into what is and what is not. Goaltender interference. It's also race week in Formula One, so we'll set that up with Gager when he pops by a little bit later on as well. If you're looking for work, we got a place that's hiring, Claiborne Services. Check them out at ClaiborneServices.com. Eric's got more on that here after a sports update. The Edmonton Oilers getting a point down in St. Louis as they drop a 3-2 decision to the Blues in overtime. Edmonton remain on the road. They'll visit Dallas tomorrow night. Other action yesterday. Islanders with a 4-3 overtime win over the Flyers. Leafs 6-4 over the Panthers. Avalanche drop one to Columbus 4-1. And the Jets snapping a six-game slide with a 4-3 win over the Kings. Jays and Astros game two. That three-game series goes later tonight down in Houston. First pitch 6-10. Astros taking the opener last night by a score of 10-0. Ronel Blanco tossing the first no-hitter of the season. 
Women's March Madness last night. Caitlin Clark made nine three-pointers, finishing with 41 points. She led Iowa over LSU 94-87, while number three UConn upsetting number one USC 80-73. Devin Booker had 52 points as Phoenix got past New Orleans 124-111 in the NBA. The Raptors tonight back on the court. They'll look to snap a 13-game losing streak when they host the Lakers. It's one of nine games around the association. World Men's Curling Championships from this morning. Canada's Brad Gushu with a 7-4 win over New Zealand. Canada sit at 4-1, and one, and they'll take on the USA later this morning at 11 o'clock. Second round action of the AJHL playoffs will continue tonight. Drum Heller hosts Calgary with the Canucks up 2-0. Kenmore welcome in white court. That series tied at a game apiece. Sports update brought to you by Claiborne Services. They are hiring all positions, including journeyman bricklayers and apprentices of all levels. You can take advantage of their outstanding mentorship program and work with peace of mind knowing that they are an industry leader in safety. For more, you can visit www.claiburnservices.com or give Jeff a call, 780-910-6728. Randy, man. Coming from Bounty Land. I am the Grandy Man. <laughs> Coming from Bounty Land. There's a high fly ball to right. Bonifacio back at the track, at the wall. Get out of here, ball. God. Grand slam home run for Curtis Granderson. Huge. 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 Grandy man. Ah, that's a throwback right there. Maddie's wow. basically told us, he goes, let's just play home run songs until we see what gets flagged and what doesn't get flagged. Maddie always so like, says uh, it's easier to ask for forgiveness than ask for permission. Than to get permission, He, he yeah. loves that line. He does. <laughs> he, really he does a lot. <laughs> and Which we wouldn't be here today without good thing. observing that line, I don't think. Eh? Exa- exactly. <laughs> so They don't even know we're renting this place. So. Grandy Man Homer song. Maybe that gets the Jays' bats going. Maybe the Grandy Man... Gets the Jays bats going. What say you? 780-218-9999. Gager is on the way. The wrap coming up a little bit uh, later on. Uh, the burglar is in it. Says, I just became a Grandy fan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. It's, it's uh, living in it's Grandy Red. Ronel Blanco. More like Blue Jays blanked, yo. <laughs> that's, in from, uh, that's in from Red today. <laughs> A hilarious Blue Jays getting no hit text. I think I that that text would hit in like mid July. You know, like that. It would it, really, it, yeah. Today, uh, getting it lost in the shuffle. But did uh, you not understand? We're freaking out about the goaltender interference <laughs> yeah, reviews. Yeah, like, yeah. You gotta you gotta hit properly here. <laughs> Brett B is in. It says Curtis Granderson home run song is needed after yesterday's game. Thank you guys. It's a good cleansing. Yeah. And Spencey Five Cents he says if you don't like Aqua, you can get the heck out of here. Yeah. Hey, and if you do like Aqua, hammer the thumbs up right now over on the uh, the YouTube. We would uh, we would appreciate that. It brings more people in. Hammer the thumbs up. They're like, oh, wow, people like this video. Then they say, maybe you would like this video, and they send it to somebody Uh-oh. else. I got a late confession. Uh-oh. I didn't give it like yet. I usually, oh, I'm man. usually one of the first people there. So 179, take that to 180 <clears throat> right there as you do. That's, uh, that's a good one. 20 more to two. Let's keep rolling. Let's keep rolling. Gager's on the way. And uh, more of your text messages to the Paris Jewelers inbox, obviously, as well. Check them out, parisjewelers.com, 22 locations across the country. Flexible financing options, so you don't have to pay until 2025 if you're a, if you're a schemer. Yeah, you'll be able to, to, to get something, then start saving up at a reasonable rate and uh, pay this thing off in 2025. Ask forgiveness instead of asking for mm. permission. Yeah, Two Juicy Mob is $9.99 <laughs> at a and Could win a gift certificate to a and for the text of the day. Obviously, we're coming at you from the Popeye's Louisiana Kitchen Studios this morning. All right, let's play Kind of Easy Trivia today. Zach, to who's going to be our sucker today? We got the real not-so-slim shady. Okay, all right. Let's, uh, let's bring him in this morning. Good morning. You ready to play Kind of Easy Trivia? Yes, I am. All right. It'll be for Mr. Mike's 
gift certificate to Mr. Mike Steakhouse Casual, Casual's Place Ever in the Hampton Inn on the corner of 137th Ave and Mark Messier Trail. They got that six o'clock or lager on tap. You need three of the five questions correct to win the gift certificate today. I'll start the ticker after read the first question. Good luck, man. Here we go. Did the Edmonton Oilers win last night? No. What position does Jordan Bennington play? Goaltender. What sport does Caitlin Clark play? Basketball. How many hits did the Blue Jays get last night? Zero. Which city is home to the Astros? Houston. Boom. Yeah. Not and confident Sergio at all. Gets a nipple erection. Oh, 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 is that dirty? This is not just a dream; it's a wet dream of orgasmic proportions. Oh, oh, oh is that dirty? Frustration sets in, and the emotion goes out, and then you just start playing by yourself. Oh, oh, oh is that dirty? You cannot come to my house. No, 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 not today. You cannot come to my house. No, 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 not today. How many hits did the Blue Jays get last night? Uh, zero. Yeah. What's your name? <laughs> Steven? <laughs> uh, a win is a win is a win, right? He, he got it done. Got it. And yeah, actually, yeah. it was five for five. Yeah, perfect. So, which city is home to the Houston, to the Astros? Houston? Houston? <laughs> <laughs> and I guess when you ask how many hits, I mean, there's never going to be a day where they got like, you know, Seven hits. Yeah, it's, I would never do that to you. <laughs> you know, it's, it's I would never be, be like, zero. Yeah, yeah. "How many hits did the Jays get yesterday?" Uh, six. Correct. <laughs> yeah. No. How many errors? You there? only know I'm asking that if they got no hit. Yeah, that's a so there's a there's play. that going for you today. Anyway, congratulations. That guy is off to uh, Mr. Mike's Steakhouse. Casually gets to swing by, pick up the GC, come see the EST crew here in our global headquarters. Uh, Walking Gage is on the way. The wrap for William Huff coming up a little bit later on. We were asked, we'll ask Gager this question too. Who is the second most important player on the Edmonton Oilers? Does Gager stay, say Skinner because he's a goalie? He might. Well, we know Connor McDavid is the most important player. Who's the next most important player on the Oilers? Is it Dreisaitl? Is it Matthias Ekholm? Is it Skinner? Is it Hyman? Is it Bouchard? Who do you have as the number two most important player on the Edmonton Oilers down the stretch and, of course, into the playoffs, or as we like to call it around here at EST, a Stanley Cup run? <laughs> Who's your second most important player? Got Zach's attention there, hey? Well, a Stanley Cup run's big. He I mean, Stanley Cup run snapped him into it. is going to be big. Who do you got? Fire those over to the Parachuters inbox at 780-218-9999. We will continue that conversation. Let's get into three questions too many today. Lieutenant Eric, do you have a liner for the segments? Three questions too many brought to you by the great staff at Park Mazda, where dealer principal Mitch Lewicki would like to wish good luck to their now former sales associate, Ivan Fedotov. Park Mazda ah, dealer for life. Had to go. They got him out of Park Mazda to be the goaltender. For the uh, Philadelphia Flyers. Yeah, they also call Park Mazda Russia. That's kind of the... Yeah. Uh, but he, he was such a tall man. People loved buying vehicles from him because he was so tall. They'd and that's say, how he kind of... Come get a real big deal. With yeah, it, you know, it's... Yeah. But it's it, in, in the in the car selling business, it's those small moments that get you over the line, right? Like it's, I guess. Like his name could be, you know, Jim Jones. And he's, you know, six foot even. Nobody... Nobody cares about it's average dude He's Jim huge. Jones, wow, yeah. I want to buy a car from him. This guy's hilarious. What a wild ride. Have you ever wanted to buy a vehicle from a freak? Yeah. When he does the test drive with you, he lays down in the back. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Did yeah. I tell you about that? My driver's ed test? Like, you know that te- you go out for your road test yeah, yeah, road to get test. your actual driver's yeah, license? I almost failed mine. Well, I failed my first time. You know why? What? Because they sent two people with me. And, and they sent me stretch, like this guy who's, again, Ivan Fedotov size. He sits in the back seat in the middle. <laughs> Why would so, they send two people with him? Training? Yeah, but, but, but the guy's a mountain of a man, and he sits in my back seat in the middle. Doesn't even sit when the seat sits in the middle. So, you know, when you got to use that important rear view mirror to parallel park, yeah. and you just see some <laughs> staring at me the entire time. Yeah. And I failed. But, I, I mean, that's, that's BS. I, I've never let that go. My confession is I lied to my buddies about how many demerits I had. You know, you get demerits, you go back, you think you were oh, allowed you like your- 45. I had 40. I almost fell. I got back to school that day, and they're like, "How'd you do?" I was like, "15 demerits, yeah, yeah, no big deal." Yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, I ran a stop sign, and I still got my I still got my license. 
it was the end of the day test. Hey, yeah, just take it and go. The guy was ready to go. <laughs> I, mean, I did a couple of things that probably should have failed me. Not roadworthy, yeah. Yeah. Well, I like that, though. It was nice. I it like was, you telling people, to... though, you're close to Yeah, well, I didn't want to go back and be like, 50. man, I almost failed, boys, and everybody else. Now, they were all probably lying, too, because we all had, like, 15 to It's the fishing like trip. Yeah. yeah. How big was it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right, here we go. Question number one. I can't believe this is even a question, but I swear to God this came into the parachuters inbox today. Guys, are you at all worried about the Oilers' offense against better teams in the National Hockey League? Well, better teams in in which regard? Like, are we talking again tomorrow? Dallas have have, a, have this guy between the pipes named uh, Ottinger, who you might know. Who's, yeah, but he's been like, yeah, this, but I, but but he has the he has the track record of doing that, right? Like, I, I just. So better teams. Are we talking about like a Jets team who you'd argue maybe on paper you're but but there's a goaltending thing there? Like I, again I'm looking but at But they it, do well against Hellebuck. I, I'm not, it's not like they light him up. I'm just over a seven game series, what concerns you the most about the Oilers offense? Is it running into a, a Demko, a Hellebuck, or an Ottinger, or or maybe a, a team? Let's go back. I'm going back to January first. Hmm. Teams that we would say are good teams and how the Oilers did against like goals wise. Like Flyers, we don't view Flyers as a good team. Sorry, sorry, Philly. You might make the playoffs, but let's let's be honest. Senators, no. Hawks, no. Red Wings, no. Canadians, no. They played the Maple Leafs, scored four on them. Kraken, Flames, not. These are all now in playoff teams. Nashville scored four on them. Lost to Vegas. That was a game we were at. Modern day Patrick Waugh. Patrick Waugh is yeah. Matty Wannick yeah. says. Well, there's, there's your answer. Uh, let's see here. The Kings, they did get shut up by the Kings. Uh, they Big scored David. four in overtime. Included against the Dallas Stars. They put up five on the Boston Bruins, lost in overtime there, scored four against the Kings at the end of February, uh, beat the Bruins 2 1. That was a low scoring game. They didn't score a ton, but they beat them. Uh, Colorado, they only scored two. They scored three against the Leafs, lost that one, put up four against the Jets, four against the Kings. I don't know. I just don't think I could ever sit here and say that I'm concerned about the Oilers' offense. I don't care who they're playing against. And I would think a lot of teams probably score fewer goals against good teams than they do against bad teams. So, is dry no, like David, I'm not concerned. Are, are they together, 29 and 97, in this uh, in this scenario? Well, they'll always be together for at least a little bit. Right, yeah. but I'm just, because if it's, if, if they're together and nothing's happening, I mean, that's a concern. I, I just wonder... You talk about certain teams, and I, I'm not. There's no concern, but I think we've seen how bad it can get with this offense, and how dry it can get at times. But we also know how high they can fly, which is, and I know maybe we haven't even seen the height that they can fly yet. But like the Oilers have scored at least three goals in every game since March 10th. At least three goals, wins or losses. Oh, that's not true. They scored two against Colorado since March 10th. Four goals, seven goals. Two goals and a loss, three goals and a win, eight goals and a win, three goals and a loss, three goals and a loss, four goals and a win, four goals and a win, six goals and a win, and then yesterday's game, uh, the two. So twice in the last three quarters of a month, they've scored less than three goals in a hockey game. I don't think you can be concerned about the offense. What is playing? Are you hearing audio out there? People are, are people talking. talking. Can I? Can I? I might, I might actually refill my coffee. Okay, go I can refill, do that now. Yeah, you yeah. can go refill your coffee and see who's out there. See who's talking out there. Uh, Zach, I think Gage is trying to uh, connect there. We'll have uh, Gage or Pop on here in about uh, five to ten minutes. I guess it's interesting because uh, Eric just left in the middle of three questions. <laughs> but I will answer the rest of your questions. 780-218-9999. B-Mother Review says, as long as McDavid is scoring, scoring is not an issue. Yeah, they, 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 the scoring with I, – I don't think – I've said this a couple of times. First of all, I don't think you ever need to be worried about the Oilers scoring. And I don't think the Oilers, if they eventually lose in the playoffs, will be sitting here the next morning being like, well, the Oilers were eliminated because they lacked offense. Like That's just never going to be part of the conversation, I don't think. I could be wrong. I mean, maybe it happens. Maybe they may, like, the Vegas blue line shuts them down or the Colorado blue line shuts them down. Maybe we're sitting here in the morning going, yeah, guess they could have used an upgrade on Fogel in the top state or something. But I just, I highly... Highly doubt that. I think it's a ridiculous, ridiculous worry. I'll calm your uh, calm your nerves down. The offense is the offense is just fine. I know Mc, they had thirty eight shots yeah, last night. Well, like, David and Dreisaitl will be fine. Did you get a coffee? Yeah. Who's out there? Nobody. 
What? It's like there's a ghost thing. Did you not hear somebody talk? I heard a lot of people talking. We never hear anybody talking. Something's going on I went out there. Everything's dark and and all the doors are shut. Something's going on here. All right. Question number two this morning. Guys, do you think there's any chance that Caitlin Clark actually takes Ice Cube's $5 million offer to go play in the big three? Pardon? Yeah. I know. Do we, do we want to reset this one This is this a one sentence. Here? I'll quickly reset it for you. Ice Cube has what offered Caitlin it? Clark $5 million to go play in his big three league. Okay, well, $5 million. I don't get offered $5 million on the best of weeks. I think whenever you're offered that. Now, she's in a spot, though. She is, and you've been talking about her in terms of, you know, there are greats, but the greats that rise to the occasion, which she's been doing, which, which nobody's questioning. So five million today to go play in a what the, the big three the, yeah it's a yeah. three on three league, no chance none. You, you take that now or do you? you no, you no, keep, no chance. No, yeah, yeah. There's uh, zero five million chance. though. Five million now in cash. No, just she, like a Price is Right game. Hey? She could change the WNBA. Yep. Like with the buzz that she has coming out of college, advertising. She could do. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Yeah. People are like, well, you know, she's not going to make that much money in the WNBA, but if Caitlin Clark has the right people running her business. She should be bringing in well beyond five million in ads and sponsorships every single year in her career. Yeah. So the WNBA salary, I don't think she's necessarily ditching the five mil four, but everything else that comes along I mean, with she's going to be the face of the WNBA. Yeah, like, there is no way that there's zero chance. It's it, it's crazy. It's even a thing. It is only eight regular season games and two postseason games, though. For five million dollars in the uh, in the big three, yeah. So it is, that, though, it is. It is very tiny. More, I think, as as an athlete of her. That's exactly. Did, it, yeah. Like, why did you? You kind of sell yourself. Paddle boat is in, and Ice Cube yeah. says she could play in both leagues. Oh well, if yeah. look, if there are no rules to this whole thing, you take the you take the five. So you, you get five mil to go play a super small. Sure, do the little stunt schedule. and then do whatever you have to do. I thought it was just a hard. You, you got to choose. You pick one. Well, she's not. She will be the face of the WNBA. She can do whatever if, she I mean, wants. If you got a side hustle that gives you five mil to play some three on three against a bunch of dudes in twenty twenty four, I'm all for it. Just go out and stroke a few threes and take your five mil, and as long as it's not hampering yeah. anything else uh, regarding your career, uh, I mean, maybe there, maybe there's a path there. All right, question number three, man. I don't know if you saw this, but it came in, uh, and yesterday was April Fools. So the question, once again, going back to the oil stream yesterday with Tommy Gazzola. Dusty, do you think Tommy Gazzola was actually April Fool's pranking you when he said he didn't know who Mr. Beast was? Oh, no. I, I, I didn't know who Mr. Beast was. And, and I... Um, Till when? Like, when did you find out? When we started this thing. You're so, like, like oh, in September. I, I still... Oh, he's that annoying guy on ads that walks around to random people and offers them to download a game. Like I, wait, yeah, that guy, yeah, yeah looks like guy. a normal guy on the street. So I don't, I don't. I just really have a hard know. time believing after like we've been on YouTube ourselves for seven, eight months. Yeah, that Tommy still wasn't aware of the biggest YouTube star in the world. But Tom doesn't go on the. He's not. That's that's not Tom's. I don't know. It's not Tom's I feel Avenue. Like, like I just thought, why, why, why? In what world? Why does he need to know who Mr. Beast is? Like I, I just. T- trying to take his defense here, right? Yeah, but I guess I mean I was still a little surprised. But I thought he was messing with me. Well, speaking of speaking of April Fool's Day pranks and and I think you saw this on Facebook, our own glue guy Jay Milne had yeah that was a funny one quite a prank played on him at his, uh, his family. Kids got up on each other's homestead. shoulders yeah. and then and there was like a tall man out in the out in the field out in the yard. Yeah, that's that's that was that, good, that's actually. that's scary. Ooh, that is scary. Yeah, but for the kids to do the whole like we always talk about the the old uh, long trench coat and two yeah. people on top of each other. Brilliant, move. pretty clever play I by, by yeah. uh, Glue Guy's kids. Great execution. Now you're just because he lives on an acreage and stuff. I'm just happy he wasn't like the guy in Back to the Future who just took a shotgun. Well, I know where you're. And, yeah, I know. And shot them. It, it's, and then like they fall in the trench coat. He's like, no, oh, what have I done? Hilarious April Fool's joke. And that's a little dangerous to me. Little who, dangerous. Who's the fool now? Is what he would. The kids, uh, the kids got me. Uh, the kids got me pretty good when I got home yesterday. It was a huge, huge April Fool's Big controversy operation. in the house. <laughs> yeah, it was one of the funniest things I've ever seen. So I get home yesterday from work, and they'd already seen me in the morning. But they're always excited when I get home from work. I hope it never ends. I'm sure when they're like fourteen and twelve, they're gonna be like, "Oh, cool, Daddy's home. Who cares?" But now they still like run to the door. They're excited to see me. So they run over to the door. I'm like, "Hey guys, what's up?" And Marshall comes up to me. He goes, "Daddy, your shoes untied." And I look down, I'm like, no, it's, he goes, April Fools! And he just thought it was the funniest thing. So then Elizabeth standing there next to him, and Uh-oh. she looks like she's about to burst into tears. And I said, what's wrong? She goes, that was my April Fools. I said, what? She goes, I told Marshall that I was going to do 
you lost your shoes untied. And, uh, and he stole it. And I thought, Marshall, that's greasy. You can't steal your sister's April Fool's. So then I had a quick nap, get up, <laughs> and I come upstairs, and Elizabeth's sitting on the couch. She still looks out. I said, hey, what's up with you? She goes, I'm st- I- Marshall stole my April Fool's. Couldn't get over, you know. I was like, oh, my God. So she comes up to me. Uh, Grandma comes over for some turkey dinner leftovers last night. And uh, she, Elizabeth comes over to me. She goes, Daddy, she's full-blown into April Fool's. Eh? So she, she comes up to me. She goes, Daddy, do you have a good April Fool's? For grandma today I said that you want I said are you going to steal My April Fool's She goes no it's not stealing We can work on it together oh, yeah. I said okay So I said go tell grandma That we don't have any turkey Left over for dinner tonight We ate it all last night So she goes up Thinking it's the fun She goes grandma We don't have any turkey for you mm-hmm. And she goes April Fool's Like she just April Fool's is hilarious for kids I loved it It was a lot of fun yesterday And immediately right? after Telling her there's no Yeah turkey. right away Like right <laughs> no, away no time We don't either. have any turkey April Fool's <laughs> It was, uh, it was a lot of Why is Marshall fun. flexing in? Why is he? I don't know. Well, it's a very I, I un- Marshall like thing. I want to get to the W five of this whole scenario because obviously they had a, they had an agreement and understanding that you know she was going to do this, it's, and then he just kind of this sounds this sounds like her. I looked at her face; she was devastated. Like well, he yeah. broke her heart. I want to know who knew what and when they knew it. This is the only thing. Like this is going to sound like an exaggeration, but I swear to God, it's not. That was the greasiest thing Marshall's done in his nine years of his life. Like, he's, he's straight-laced. He doesn't hurt anybody's feelings. Wow. He's the kindest kid ever. When I found out that he stole Elizabeth's April Fool's joke, I was, wait, what are you, what? I think he had some walking around money after uh, paying that chip debt yesterday. Uh, Probably he was, felt good. Uh, and, you know, strutting around like a peacock. Yeah, that type of thing. I think. Strutting around <laughs> like a, a peacock. So, yeah. I want to know good. more about this, though. I, again, how did we get to this point? Uh, <laughs> B Mother Review says, uh, I know who Mr. Beast is. But I have not watched his videos. I'm too busy watching. Yeah, like I don't get it. What, what does he do? He's just an entertainer. Uh, he posts videos. He spends a lot of money on videos. Yeah, they get millions and millions and millions of views, does and then he, he takes influence? that money to do. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, a, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, he does some I wish good him videos, well. But uh, he was a really big thing until EST launched on YouTube. Wow. And I don't see him streaming for seven straight hours a day. Can't spell I beast think, without EST. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, actually. Uh, all right. Uh, hey, by the way, uh, Edmonton Sports Talk hats. You may have saw one last night on the uh, the Sportsnet broadcast. Um, I think we're sold out right now. Maddie's, yeah. Maddie's doing another order. He's doing another run of EST I hats. got mine. You got yours. Zach Tim's got his there yeah. uh, behind the screens. So. Well, we got Joaquin Gage for, uh, for Pro-Am Sports. Gager's, uh, Gager's going to join us. He has an EST hat, does not happen to be wearing it today. Uh, but also, as we bring in Gager here over at Pro-Am, uh, car flag season is just around the corner. Hello. And if you're looking to get yourself a car flag, they got the royal blue double-sided car flags at Pro-Am Sports. Get it now because, you know, the two days prior to the playoffs, like April 18th and 19th, there's going to be a mad rush for car flags in this city. So you might as well go... And get one now. Wind's been blown as of late as well, and it's the final you know stretch run. It of the was month. windy yesterday. Cup, yeah, so get the flight. Get, get, get this is the test run. Yeah. This is your your pre cup run. Uh, Gager, what's going on, buddy? Good to see you guys. Happy uh, Happy Tuesday. Hello. Great show so far. Thank um, you, thank you, Joaquin. That means a lot, buddy. Yeah, it's uh, it's good. Uh, thanks for the text this weekend, Dusty. Too to uh, to to show that I knew what I was talking about with Ricky Stanicki. That's, oh, uh, I have, you know what? I have not talked about this yet, but Gage was like, you got to watch Ricky Stenicki. It's great. I was like, you know what? I've seen it popping up on my Amazon Prime. My, I mean, I got through Conor McGregor in the second half of uh, Roadhouse, so I was like, you can well, handle got to try Ricky Stenicki. <laughs> yeah. I still liked Roadhouse, though. But uh, it was one of the funniest movies I've watched in a long time. I have to say, Gager, John Cena and the bearded friend. I mean, Efron was good, oh, yeah. but the bearded friend, yeah. the tall, ginger, bearded friend, he was hilarious. I'm not too familiar with him, but I thought Cena was great. Ricky Stenicki is worth the time, man. Well worth the time. The fact that that didn't even make the theaters is a is a travesty. That would have been a, that would have been a good laugh, but awesome movie. Um, another thing happened yesterday that was funny. Um, you know, you you talk about your kids knowing what's coming up on the show because they they listen to it so much. My uh, my daughter. Is starting to learn, and she's fifteen, and yeah. she she she's getting the catchphrases and stuff. So um, it was funny. We were we went to this is another story. I'll tell you later. But um, we were getting my daughter's lashes done for dance. I had yeah. to take her to go get them done. We were listening to the show, and and uh, we get back in the car, and it was a point where you said, 
oh, I wish get a take from tonight's game with Gager. Yeah, yeah, yesterday. And, yeah. And so she goes, oh, well, what do you, Dad? What do you think? And I go, well, I don't think the Oilers got it tonight, sweetie. He goes, what? And so she was giving it to me all night saying, well, and then once the blues went ahead and I kind of gave her the side <laughs> eye and, and then they, uh, and then they lost in overtime and she, you should have seen, like, she thought it was a moment when your kid thinks you're, you know, the, the, the luster of dad is, is wearing off, uh, so to speak, that the, the shot, it doesn't shine so bright, but once in a while, it, it did the last night that she gave me that, uh, Oh my God. That guy does know what he's talking about. Was uh, was Still great. So thank it. you for that. <laughs> it, it's, it's weird because Gager has feelings. He's got good reads on these games, and I have a feeling when Gager has a feeling about a game. That's why yesterday I was like, man, I don't know. I feel like Gager's feeling something on this game, and then uh, yeah, I mean, it's just one of that's just the way that game went last. Like I didn't think the others played poorly last night, Gager. They just, I mean, well, well, let's get into the goaltender interference. You're a goal. You were a goalie. You're the goalie on two guys and a goalie, and we'll get into more on two guys later today. What did you think of the two goaltender interference calls? Oh, gosh. You know, I I think there has to be a little bit of battle f- from the goalie standpoint to battle through things. I'm not saying, you know, one-on-one in the paint, battling for position or anything like that, but there's going to be little bits of incidental contact. Like when I... And I think that's the case for both those goals where, you know, Hyman comes through. But again, the body language of Bennington shows you that he didn't think he was interfered with. Like he was, that was just a normal kind of hockey play. The way he, he puts his head up in the air, goes to show me, he goes, oh, I made a mistake. I should have, I should have been more compact. Whereas Skinner, you know, although it does look like possibly that guy's looking for a deflection, does does impede Skinner's ability to stop the puck. And, and, but again, I think there's, it's a fine line between like, I, I don't Gager, know. I, do you I think, think, it goes do you think in the NHL though, far. those reactions send like the opposite message when, when we talk about like NHL officials and how they, you know, you don't want the tail wagging the dog here. I know that's why I mean, it's a fine, but I'm just going from being a goalie and knowing, Oh, because uh, I believe it was on the overtime goal that McDavid scored when he went shelf here against Bennington. He did the same. He had the same reaction where he pl- overplayed the puck. So you could almost, I mean, it's easy for us because we watch these games, but you can see the same type of reaction where he was taking onus on that goal way more than he thought that Hyman was was interfering with him. Uh, Gager, what do you think of Skinner being like, I was interfered with, and on the replays, I don't know if we ever really got a great look at it on any of the replays. We've had a few stills sent in this morning with the flex on the stick of of when it catches his yeah, blocker yeah, or his pad. And yeah, it, I'm curious. Like, what do you think of, like, I don't know if the, the bench would have had a great look at it. I think they're kind of going with Skinner being like, hit my pad, let's go after this. Where do you come out on a coaching staff having faith in the goalie in that situation and maybe not making the decision for themselves. Cause the others don't usually miss on these types of things. Don't, don't let the goalie make the decision. Like have the guy in the, in the room, look at it. The guy whose um, job the, it is to be video guy. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're, you're too emotional at that point. And even sometimes a little a dusting, a brush by, you can feel like you were really impeded. So I don't look at it that much. Um, again, we talked about this with with offsides. I don't think that you should you should only be able to look at a review at a certain speed. Like, yeah, and I know the stick flexed, and we can we can zoom in and pause it, and there's quite a big flex on that stick. Um, but that shouldn't be the reason why that that goal is disallowed. I don't think like you can't really see that in real time. It's it's gotten to a point these the reviews are taking way too long. If you can't notice it right away from the certain angles at a, at maybe not full speed, but you know, maybe one time slower, a definitive, then, then the call on the ice stands, I think is the way to go. Lucky engage with us on the show this morning. We were asking the question a little bit earlier on Connor McDavid is the most important player on the Edmonton Oilers. We know that who's the second most important player on the Edmonton Oilers. We've had cases for Skinner, Ekholm, Dreisaitl, those would be the three, I think, that we've had in this number Skinner, two conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Who do you uh, who do you who do you have there, Gager? Oh, that's a that's a good question. Um, that's tough. I don't want to lose my goalie license. <laughs> I, but... said, I said I was like I feel like Gager's going to go. <laughs> the goalie should be the number one or two most important player on any team. You know? Well, okay. Here's what I'll say. Uh, it, Skinner's an NHL goalie, but for a team that's looking to win the Stanley Cup, you should have an NHL goalie that's consistent and a bona fide, solid number one guy. So, and Skinner's that guy. But if you didn't have him, that's what you'd be looking for. But other than Connor McDavid, I think one of the players that makes the people around him better more than anyone else is Matthias Ekholm. He makes he makes Bouchard look better. He uh, he he lessens the burden of Dar- Darnell Nurse. Um, he solidifies your 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 penalty kill with whoever he plays with. And over the last little bit, there is a little bit of offensive touch, right? So, um, God, I hate to say it, but I. I have yeah. to say it's Matthias Echo. Uh, you, uh, <laughs> we <laughs> also said Matthias yeah. Echo. We'll destroy oh, yeah. the tape after yeah, yeah, this, it's, though. It's, it's not no, a record. But, but, like we looked Don't at it. Like, we looked at like this, Gager. Like if if for games three and four of a playoff series, you lost a guy for two games. If you lost Drysaddle, can you get through that? Maybe. If you lost Echo on the back end for two playoff games. I think you're in a whole lot of trouble. Whole lot of trouble. Yeah. yeah it's, so. uh, it's too it's too big. I think you can you can gather around by committee and and solidify the defensive side of things much well you can all contribute a little bit more with Leon Dreisaitl out of the lineup. With with at home it's just too it's too cavernous uh, a, a hole to fill and that's you can't do that. Gager, does your uh, pursuit of first in the Pacific change after last night, if at all? Uh, I know you've joined Dusty you know, and, and Tom on, on various shows on this station, but five points back of the Canucks this morning with a game in hand. They do have that game April 13th. Um, you know, in your mind, you're, you're probably getting it. It's one of, you know, Vegas or the Kings anyways. Uh, five points back, the game in hand. How important is it to catch the Canucks at this point? Um, I don't know if it's if it's really important. It, it's pick your poison at this point with the Pacific division on who you face in the first round. It seems like every team is going quite well. Aside, maybe, I guess you could say the Kings are are fluttering a little bit, but they're going to be uh, a hard out regardless, I think, in the first round for would, anyone. Would you have any um, caution, though, with this group? And, and Dusty brought it up earlier today, too, and that the season that they've had, and then you, you reach that, that foot of, of the division, and then maybe, I mean, people will be talking about, oh, the season, and they, they start they out, they're their way winners, back, they win the division. Subconsciously enough, like, does any of that concern creep into you with this group? No, I don't think so, because if you really look at the whole picture, um, the, the only reason that you haven't caught the Vancouver Canucks is your poor play back in October. Right, like, and that's going to happen throughout the throughout the whole year. Oh, you're going to look back if we if we could have got that one, or just you know, one win against the Canucks at that point makes a world of difference. I think five points is going to be tough with nine games remaining for them. Um, and the Canucks are good, man. I watched them. Uh, the, they played a, a a feisty Ducks team. I guess it wasn't the greatest game by any stretch of the imagination, but the Ducks tied like they were looked like they were going to overtime and. You were, you know, as a as an Oiler fan, I'm sure people were going, "Okay, come on, Ducks, get this to a shootout," and who knows what can happen. But then they uh, they they managed to pull it out in the end. They're a really good team as well. Um, but I don't, you know, what I I'm I'm in the belief that there's getting first and going against the lower competition for the Oilers. I don't like that. I I I've talked about this throughout the year. It seems like. They get up for the really good competition. They might not all, like. There's always a good effort from them, and I think you'll see that. And they're much more mature. But I like the fact that they could possibly play the Kings or the or the Golden Knights in the first round. Gager, it is race week. Off to Japan for Formula One. What's the big storyline for you heading into this one? Um. Well, from the top of things, I think it's Carlos Sainz. Like, what's what's he going to do? His uh his values never been higher. 
I think in F1 and he's joked about it being unemployed going into going into next year. Let's face it, he's going to have a have a big decision to make um whether it's you know there's talk of Red Bull, there's talk of Mercedes. Um he could really I think if he performs kind of the same way this weekend as he did uh it back in Australia, I think things get settled sooner rather than later because you'll get I don't let's say let's say it this way if he has a good outing this de- his deal gets done before the summer break I don't think teams will wait long enough um, Aston Martin sniffing around for sure he's just got to make the he's got to make the choice whether he wants to jump in a competitive car now or be part of building something for the future and I think at 29 years old I think he wants to jump into something that's competitive right now. If you were Red Bull and you do replace Checo for next season, would you go with Signs or would you go with Alonso, who seems to be like openly campaigning for that second Red and Bull? And he's team? got youth on his side as well. Right? Alonso. I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's- I think I, I, I go with Alonso. Um, you would, I'd eh? Like, well, maybe it's selfishly wanting to see him in the in the Red Bull colors. Um, and maybe pushing Max a little bit. And, see, and like Alonso's just a beast, man. You, you can see what he's, he always said it's the car that you get. And he's got a, a pretty decent ride with Aston Martin and has been quite successful over the last year and a bit here. So, um, imagine what he can do in that, uh, in that Red Bull car and just a little bit more. I think, you know, this is a guy that could probably push Max more than Checo could. I, if, if I really look at it, Dusty, if you put Checo in the Aston Martin, yeah, I don't think he's doing compared what Alonso's to Alonso. Doing, I don't yeah. think he's. I don't think he's doing what Alonso's doing. Right? So, do you think? Do you, um, just to follow up here, do you think at any point Ferrari regrets moving on from Signs to go to old Lewis Hamilton? Well, if he keeps winning, yeah, or, or being competitive and and beating his team, that's the thing. If he if he finishes ahead of Leclerc, that's then you're That's moving on like, from your best driver. Yeah. What are we doing right now? Right, like I I love the fact that he's putting pressure on his on his teammate right now. But Freddie Vasseur, um, you know, all account, he's kind of turned around that team. We don't see the the uh, the massive mistakes that we that we were so accustomed to with with Ferrari. And you know, and he said it. It's when when you can put pressure on other teams. Uh, they tend to make a few more mistakes, and after last, you know, the last race, they they mess up with Max's brakes. Uh, that the the race is a lot tighter. The the margins for error are a lot smaller. Uh, maybe now they could, that uh, Ferrari seems to have things figured out a little bit. They can push Red Bull into into making some of those mistakes during the race. Gager, as always, buddy, good catching up. We'll talk on two guys a little bit later on. Can't wait. There you go. That's Joaquin Gage brought to you by Pro-Am Sports. And uh, remember, it's almost car flag season. Get your car flags at Pro-Am Sports. They got the uh, double-sided royal blue. Looks real nice. Take it out. Test drive. Get four of them. Pretty soon we'll be counting them. The kids love counting car flags. Must I think they got up over like 500 to 600 last year. Well, you always want to have a few backups if, if you're starting lineup. I mean, look, you, you got four or five flags in your car. You, you whip down the Hyundai once or twice, and, and you know if you don't get back on you, you got to have some ready to go in the trunk at all times as well. Get a flag, but get a good backup team as well assembled. Amos Moses to the inbox this morning. Paris Jewelers inbox, 780-218-9999. Our youngest son's teacher told his class that their grade three class was chosen to win iPads by the school division. She carried a big box in and told them to come up and get their free iPad. When they went up to the front of the class, they were given a single package medical gauze iPad. Our son nine said it was a funny joke, but he was very disappointed. That's that's a great one. That is hilarious. And a hell of a life lesson. Like nothing, you're, you get an iPad for free. You kidding me? But nowadays in these schools, though, they're using the tablets. They're, using, they're probably getting thinking they're like, free. we're getting iPads for free. That's really good. You don't get anything in this world for free. Teachers, do you nine. ever have a teacher like? Pull off uh, April Fools on you back in the day. Just trying to think, uh, nothing, nothing, nothing memorable, memorable enough to do. Oh this my would, god, this would a, be memorable. I think you would remember this, this. Well, you'd get her again. This is a life lesson for for nine. Um, yeah, but that that that's good. I have to give a bit of a a, a wink and a nod and, a, and an EST cap tip to uh, to those teachers. 
Hey, they're getting one on the kids. The kids are usually the ones pranking the teacher. Yeah, the other way. Take that. <laughs> yeah, my name's Chris. Oh, we know you're Steven. Like the sort of substitute teacher. Yeah, joke. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> to be honest, it's pretty lame. Uh, Duck Dad over on the Nasty Chat says, Hey, guys, how is it not Hyman? The others have no one else with the ability that he has in front of the net. The others become strictly a perimeter team without him. Well, and that's where the conversation we said earlier, right? It's McDavid, Dry Settle, that comes Skinner, but then you get into the others. And now the debate is on, could this team, where would they be without Hyman? Could you have another guy imitating or doing close to what Hyman's doing? Or And, and somebody responded with, with a list of net front presence guy that you could... Maybe maybe not yeah, getting but as many you goals gotta, as Hyman. You gotta, you gotta, gotta have a little. Yeah, you, you gotta, gotta finish. finish, and he finishes. But. I mean, you can throw any any Tom, Dick, or Harry in front of the net, but can they finish? And that's something that he's been able to do. And he has rich parents, of course. Obviously, so that, that. his dad is actually paying Knobloch one hundred fifty thousand dollars a month to put him on the power play. <laughs> Ridiculous take. Ridiculous take. Go to go to hell, Berkshire. <laughs> you tell him I'm coming. And hell's coming with me, you hear? Hell's coming with me! And that's a funny thing, right? It's a clip from Tombstone. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, no, you're not actually. Yeah. Uh, Giant Mike says, Defensemen play the most time on the ice, so that's a huge part of value to the team. The only other factor is value over replacement. Who takes over those minutes? I think Ekholm is the right choice for the second most important player yeah, on the ice. The, the whole players. domino effect with him either in or out of the lineup. Uh puts him over the top. As Penner Pancake says, clone Ekholm five more times and this team wins a cup guaranteed. God, multiple. 100%. Multiple cups. And let's be honest, with the amount of money Daryl Cates has, how has he not figured out a way to clone Matthias Ekholm? Look, maybe it's in the works. Is he not in the medical business? Maybe the whole hip thing was, was a cover. <laughs> maybe they're experimenting early in the season and then once the playoffs come around, you have this uh, army of Ekholms marching off the uh, the LTIR or something. Here's the here Once again, it comes back around to a story of Building a team. You've got a guy like Leon Dreisaitl, who, depending on your level of importance of Skinner, might not even be like the third most important player on the team, but he's he's a 40-goal, 100-point guy this season, and he's been better in the past. And you've got these other pieces that you're starting to become kind of confident in. So, And then you've got Hyman, who, we, you know, somebody was trying to make a case for him to be at number two. I don't think he is. He's more replaceable than Ekholm. But they have a really good team. And last night's loss should not be in any way have you freaking out about anything. Oh, my God flips this discussion on its head. CC good versus CC bad would be my second biggest factor in cup or not. And perhaps you're looking at it from the other opposing view. That is a hell of a thing for you to say to me. Now, now if we're stretching here... If CC plays well in the playoffs, That's or if huge. Stetcher, or if DeHarnay, if somebody on that right side steps up and plays well in the playoffs, or I would even say just doesn't play Competent. bad in exactly. the playoffs, yeah, yeah, uh, that could end up going a long way. So it, it's a, it's a, or my gourd there. It's, it's, it's a, a different take it's a on different the conversation, deeper but take on it, but that's, uh, interesting that's an interesting. Point, yeah. yeah, it's an interesting, interesting take. Fraser's already bringing the heat out there. <laughs> I hope up. the mic's not picking up any of the things that <laughs> <laughs> he's saying out there. But he sounds about ready for the uh, for the hangout today. <sighs> Guys, don't forget the work Leon does on the dot and how he moves around the lineup. Great debate now that we have this because more quality players. Yeah, no, I, and right? I think and a few Fair people. Enough. This is not an ant. This is no, totally no. not anti. A few people zone. said earlier in this conversation, in the show, that this is not an ant. This shouldn't be viewed as some sort of anti dry talk, but it does illustrate the point is is how top heavy that they are up front, and that that's a good issue to have. I mean, having this discussion with all of these pieces and not arriving on an answer that's that's the best part of it all. Um, but it, it certainly in this, it takes nothing away from dry or the multitude of, you know actions that he can bring to the team. But again, I think the biggest example of this between Dreisaitl and Ekholm is, as you said, take two out for a game's three or four in a seven-game series. And the answer is pretty simple. I, I, I think Ekholm. you'd be more worried because then you've got Bouchard playing with somebody that he hasn't played with who's just, not Matias Ekholm. Everything's out of flux. Darnell Nurse is going to have to play 30 minutes. He's better when he's playing 23-24. You could at least throw Nuge over into the middle. Yeah, and you try have to get away from it for too. two games. You don't obviously have Leon Dreisel on the power play, major buzz kill. Um, but you got other ways you can score on the power play as well. So. Tommy Rubella, Zach Hyman, easily replaceable. Just ask Kyle Dubas. Oh, coming in quick after that NW here. Hilarious Kyle Dubas joke. 
Gotta love it. <laughs> we'll always take them, right? It's, yeah. I mean, they're always is, welcome here. Right? This is a place. <laughs> it's a safe Kyle Dubas joke place. Yeah. It always <laughs> has been. It made 99 99. I like this. I like how we've kind of, we're coming up to the end of the show here. You got a big game against Dallas tomorrow yeah, down in Texas. One. Screw what happened last night. Screw the reviews, all that stuff. You get a point, you move on. I'm proud of everybody today. <laughs> we've, we've grown a lot. We've grown a lot. I'm proud of everybody today. Hey, there's a real Richard. That was the guy who qualified today. He just hey. slid into the nasty hey. chat. It says, uh, a late halloo to all the nasties out there. Halloo. Halloo. Yes. Halloo on this wonderful to Tombstone Tuesday today. I saw the other day, there's, uh, I don't know. On Facebook, they're making up all these movies all the time and movie posters and stuff. Yeah. And there was a remake for Tombstone that said, coming 2024. And uh, I can't remember who was Wyatt Earp, but McConaughey was doing Doc Holliday's role. And I actually think of, like, all the modern-day actors who could commit to, like, having tuberculosis for the entire movie. I think McConaughey could pull it off, man. If you, if you, if you Google right now Tombstone Remake, yeah. there's a link that comes up from IMDB, which is like a pretty, right? You want to know stuff about movies, you, you go there. Uh, the link says, is a new Tombstone Remake with Matthew McConaughey, dot, dot, dot. So I go, wow, this is the first search result. I'm going to click on it. I click on it, and it takes me to a 404 error. Dude, where's my web page? The requested the URL was not found. So, I, like, is that, is that the, is that, is, am I an April Fool? Is that the joke? You, you might be. Is that the joke? Because now you've mentioned this. Why does it have to be just an April Fool? Can we not do this? We're remaking everything these days. Why not Tombstone? Why not Matthew McConaughey? This isn't a joke. Shouldn't be. Ah, this is it. I found it. I found the poster that was on Facebook. Facebook, I don't think you can believe anything on Facebook anymore. I wouldn't. I don't even. I don't even believe my friends putting up pictures of their kids. I'm like, are, are you sure those are real kids? Even when now? you get a friend request from somebody, it's probably somebody else. I always very. So you never accept that. friends. It's uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, who's Remember? from uh, the, what's the zombie show? Oh, the uh, he's the bad guy in the the zombie show. Yeah, the the famous dead, zombie dead show. walkers, the walking walking, walking dead. dead yeah. yeah, but uh, it's but uh, Matthew McConaughey as uh, I think he could maybe pull that off. Uh, I don't want to see it done, but if they force it down our throats, I'd have some. Uh, I'd have some time for McConaughey. Jake Gyllenhaal is Morgan Earp. Oh, one of the brothers. Yeah, yeah, that'd be good too. I'm a big Jake Gyllenhaal guy. He could pull that off. Leo DiCaprio is Billy. Uh, Strummy says Johnny Depp would be a sick dog holiday. Yeah, does Johnny Depp do anything anymore? Johnny I don't know. Depp he's like, would be uh, great. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if he does anything. Full pirate. All right, let's get into the wrap here for William Huff. If you want your place to look as good as ours, and our place looks damn good. I mean, if you're listening on TuneIn or on iHeart or at EdmontonSportsTalk.com. It's mint. Uh, you can take our word for it. It looks real nice. Real nice. It's on the level, I think people say. And it is level. They use they did a great job. Yeah, yeah they yeah, did yeah, they use that. To, even. To get that done. So it does look terrific. Uh, what would you learn today? William Huff, they've been doing this since 1972. Bruce and the A-team. The dream team. WilliamHuff.com if you want your place. Uh, spice it up a little bit. Spice it up with William Huff. Uh, what would you learn on the show today, buddy? Well, Brad Gushu picking up his 50th career win at the Men's Worlds. Uh, Canada topping New Zealand earlier this morning. They'll take on the USA later today at 11 o'clock from Switzerland, Canada. Four and one, second place in the standings. I learned that Caitlin Clark is a cold-blooded killer. That's what I learned. I kind of learned and, and, and it last nobody night. Nobody disagrees. No. I, 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 how can you? She is phenomenal. The range that she has, like from, from the women's game, it's Steph Curry-esque. Like Steph came along and sort of changed. There were great shooters before Steph Curry, obviously. Reggie Miller and the like. Ray Allen. There's a lot of great shooters before Steph. But Steph changed. He changed the game. Now everybody's firing up 30-foot threes. There was a stat last night. Her average three-point shot is 26 feet. That's well beyond the three-point line. And we saw so it last Doncic night. Luka Doncic finger roll there. Yeah, <laughs> she, she, was, she, was hitting, she was hitting threes from, like, just left of the logo. And not in a blowout. Like, in a, in a tight do-or-die, winner-take-all game, man. She was absolutely outstanding. And that's on the court. Like... 
we talk about timing in sports so much, and with the rise in the excitement of women's basketball, both WNBA, college now, and and her pairing that and matching it and leading leading Iowa, doing what she's doing on the court, but as you said, carrying herself and rising to these moments. It's one thing to be identified as a good player. The moment comes, well, where are you? She's right there front and center, smack yeah. dab in the middle. So it's a hell of a story to watch. We had the question, you know, five mil from Ice Cube. You, the world's her oyster. And, and I look forward to doing what she does now with women's basketball and leading that charge and leading that sport. Um, because I know in the years we've been doing this together, never seen, heard, or, or just the interest, text line, nasty chat, Twitter, and all about the women's March Madness yeah, tournament. Here we I are. So it's man. very illustrative. And she's at the forefront of it. So good honor. We also learned that I actually agreed with both of the, no, the, both of the calls last night. Well, and I'm stupid because of it. Well, people were learning that about you. Some still don't want to believe it. And I, you know, they'll, they'll, the fingers in the ears, yeah. the la, 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 la. Sorry, everybody. Sometimes you got to have the non-homer take, and I did today. Do I feel bad about it? I feel a little bit bad about it, but, yeah, I mean. You're no Jack Edwards, eh? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not taking, I'm not taking that extra money and put it in my pockets. You know, Show them like, your I'm pockets. Not, I'm not, my Show pockets, your pockets are empty. I do have a, I do have a wallet in here. And <laughs> I, I, I see a coincidentally wad. do have $500 cash yeah, in this yeah, pocket. Yeah, but so. it's all no, unrelated. That's not the case. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's get to your sound of the day today. Can I just cook again for a second here? I'd like to, I'd like to do that. I'm your huckleberry. How <laughs> dude. I'm your huckleberry. How dude. No. No. That is a hell of a thing for you to say to me. How dude. Skin that smoke wagon and see what happens. You tell them I'm coming and hell's coming with me, you hear? Hell's coming with me! Oh, Creed Tombstone Remix. You know, that's just Tuesday nice. Morning. That, that's just that, that, that Creed bed yeah. with those tombstone drops. The I'm your Huckleberry. It just works. How lewd. That really hit there. I thought I hit the beats and everything. Yeah, a little really off the rails good. after that, but really good. that's your sound of the day today. Um, we also learned today on the show that people are very excited for Wednesdays, which will be happening uh, tomorrow on the show. That's uh, that's pretty. Still exciting. no badge. Nope. No, a no, tradition no, no. I talked about the any badge other, last uh, yeah. night, and I still forgot to bring it in. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's on me. Sorry, boys. My bad. All right, let's get to your text of the day today for A and W. If you have uh, not taken advantage of this deal yet, let's be honest, you're wasting your money in other places because this is a this is a real nice deal from our partners over at A&W. How good does this sound right here? Wait for Until that. April 14th, Wait for you can enjoy two A&W Mama Burgers for $9.99. Available, participating A&W locations. Most drive throughs are open 24 hours. Two Juicy Mamas, only available at A&W. This is not our live recording of it, but it probably sounded exactly the same. Yeah, it's... You can't tell the difference. I can't tell the difference I'm at so all. proud of us still for nailing that last week with Dr. J. Well, and for Dr. J leading and providing us with the... Inst- I mean, look at... He him. was a front man. Takes a village, takes a band, right? It's exactly what it is. I mean, you didn't even notice the, the no drum... You know, we, we didn't, yeah, even, you didn't even need it. And you don't need like, it. Trev was rocking that egg he so hard. Going, he didn't yeah, even, yeah, absolutely. Uh, he didn't even matter. Uh, all right, <laughs> let's get into your text of the day today. Let's go with this one. It was a, it was a good. This isn't going to win text of the year. It's not going to win an SD. Right? They're not all going to be. They're not all going to be home runs. Sometimes for text of the day, you got to line a single to right. Find just, an open hole. Just want to get on base here. Find yeah, an open hole. Yeah, take a walk. Sure. Take a walk if you want. Lean into one. But RSO Cody today on a day in which we were giving Ekholm a lot of love. I thought it was nice to give Ekholm a lot of love today after he had that puck go by him in overtime. A and goal and an goal. assist like, as well. It yeah. cancels out. Anyway, uh, Ekholm is Buzz Lightyear. All the toys were initially worried about their rank in the pecking order. But now, see how valuable the new toy is. 
I really like that one. Yeah, he's I a like modern whole, day Buzz Lightyear. That Toy Story stuff was really good there. That hits. RSO Cody, congratulations, buddy. You've won a gift certificate to A and W. Go get your hands on two of those juicy mamas for nine ninety nine. What are you uh what are you watching tonight, buddy? Yeah, well, uh, match day 31 of the Premier League gets underway later this afternoon with a handful of games. Newcastle at home to Everton, Nottingham Forest host Fulham, Burnley and Wolves. You got Bournemouth at home to Crystal Palace, and a good old London derby, West Ham at home to Tottenham. That's 115. Jays Astros, that series will continue from Houston tonight, game two of three. The Jays, again, much like we just said, you just just need to get on base. just need a hit. Yeah, do something. <laughs> you need a Please. hit here, uh, a little something. So I'll be keeping uh, a side eye on that one as well. Over to the NHL, where Vegas are at home to Vancouver tonight in a tasty Pacific affair. You got uh, the Predators at home to the Bruins. Minnesota, yeah, they're kind of they're kind of out of the out of the running there. Capitals are the big one too. They're in Buffalo, so they still need to keep uh, piling up points for that wild card chase. I'm on the clock right now in one of my uh, fantasy football drafts that I'm already doing. One of my best uh, my best ball is drafts. This, is this the slow man where you have to like no, announce yeah, yeah, I've, well, I've got two going now. Okay. I'm doing two slow drafts at the same time. And it only gets really difficult when I'm on the clock at the same time, which I almost am right now. But I've started this draft, PPR draft, Justin Jefferson and A-Chain from Miami. Mm. And now I don't, I don't like who's... I don't, I don't, it's the third round. I'm like, I don't like anybody. Devontae Adams in the third round? I guess maybe. I don't like anybody else. I'm not going to quarterback already here. I'm not going to take a tight end. So I guess I'm going to take... I well, Bijan. Bijan's still in the, uh, <laughs> the board there, your boy. Uh, Lakers-Raptors tonight, too, for you. And your I am going to be watching that. Sure that'll be yeah, on that'll your be, uh, I'll be watching that one tonight. A nice early one. Yeah. Nielsen family can have dinner watching LeBron destroy the Toronto Raptors oh. as he's done his entire career. Yeah. So that'll be, uh, that'll be a good one as well. Strummy, let's wrap up with this. He goes, Ekholm also got walked, and he did. And that was weird. That's like when Donnie didn't roll a strike in Lebowski. You're like, what the hell is going on here? They walked in, and then I, was, I looked. I was like, wait a second. Was that Ekholm? What happened on that play? They all get one. Doesn't matter. He's still the man. Yeah. <laughs> he is still the man, and he will be very important to them if they do end up winning a Stanley Cup championship. Number two man, we've decided. He's the number, He's two, number two man. two man. He's the number two man. His new nickname can be number two. Uh, all right. That's going to do it for us today. For Zach to come. And Lieutenant Eric, I'm Dustin Nielsen. we got a great hangout coming up. Will Fraser is in the house. Another chance to qualify for the EST Flyway to Vegas coming up between 9 and 11. I got a, I've got a meeting at 1030 today with the Cool Bet guys. Okay. Because we're thinking about uh, EST, WST, Lock Shop, online poker tournament, which could be a lot of fun. Do they also have to dress up in Western gear for this? No, one? that'll be a different yeah. tournament entirely, but this will be a nice one to sort of wet our whistle. <laughs> so that's coming up a little bit later on today. I'll be back with the Lock Shop and then two guys in goalie today. Two more chances to qualify for the EST Flyway to Vegas on uh, those two shows later today as well. Tell your friends about EST. If you're on uh, YouTube, uh, make sure Autoplay is on. It'll take you right on over to the Hangout with Tommy and Maddie and Fraze. Uh, that's coming up here just after 9 o'clock. Have a great day and take it easy.